You're listening to Cobra Cast. The Cobra injects deadly venom through its fangs, like ta toxins through a pair of hypodermics. is the Cobra Cast. And here's your host, Bobby Sharon. You gotta let this ride. It's the way it rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Please welcome to episode number 495 of the Cobra Cast podcast. With uh, we're all designated drivers tonight. We're all drinking smart water. <laughs> <laughs> we're really partying it up on a Monday night. Huh? <laughs> we're tearing it up. Anyways, full metal Jack Lope is in the house. What's going How's it going, on? man? What's up, buddy? We got Daniel, we got Joshua, and we got Tony. What's up there, Big T? What's up, man? How you tell you me, doing? brother. Uh, it's an honor to be here, man. Yeah. An honor, really? It's an honor, sir. <laughs> wow, man. I've been watching your stuff for a couple of years now. Man, it's been a been a hot minute since we've been doing this. Yeah. yeah. Man, it'll be seven years in September. It's crazy. Jeez, that's impressive. Very Damn. impressive. <sighs> I'm uh, I'm alive to tell the stories. <laughs> Some of these are pretty rough, man. I'll tell you, you know. So, so how are you guys doing? All right, hanging in there. Yeah, I think we're so. doing good. Well, yeah. thank you for driving all the way up here. I know it's probably like a little pain in the ass coming all the way up here but i mean any any time you drive in austin in general it's a pain in the ass <laughs> anytime i gotta leave the house is a pain in the ass <laughs> no shit <laughs> that's right it's uh it's good bike weather tonight oh you drove yeah, a bike true. up here huh? i did that's true beautiful yeah. day today i mean i was like what like 80 it was like oh, kind of nice. shitty out this morning but that tonight or yeah. during the day it was like 80 yeah, was beautiful mm -hmm. why don't you tell them where you rode from I, I did. I rode here from Kyle. <laughs> That's a hell of Good a ride. Good Lord, man. Man. Jesus. God, dude. <laughs> it's amazing, man, the distances people come from. I had one dude come in from, uh, he came in to rehearse with his band, but he came in from, I think it was like New Orleans or some shit. And he stopped off here first, and then wow. he went over to, you know, hang out with, you know, go over to one of the band's guy's house to stay, you know. Damn. But I'm like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a hell of a ride. I said, man, don't ever do that again. He goes, oh, man, I love coming up here. He's, he's, done it. he's actually done it a couple of times, you know? Okay. Damn. Damn. Cool, man. Fucking nuts. No, that's uh, a trooper right there. That's yeah. a hell of a trooper. That's yeah. what that is. So. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, let's let's get into this, man. I got to know about this name. I, first off, I, lo I love the logo. I love the logo. The logo's killer. Awesome. Thanks. Who, who did yeah. the logo? Uh, his name's Chris Meaves. Uh, he's an old yeah. kind of co-worker of mine. I was, I was doing audio video, like freelance work for a couple mm -hmm. of years. And I just randomly met the guy and he casually mentioned he, he like dabbled with graphic art. And then uh, a couple of years later, we're, we're looking for a graphic artist and I just randomly messaged him and he was like, yeah, man, I love it. I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and Hell and yeah. yeah, to his credit, he, he lived up to his word. That's always yeah. cool to get a logo that looks that looks cool on merch. Because oh, these yeah. days, dude, it's all about the merch. It's the merch. It's it's oh yeah. There's such a visual element. Yeah. To everything now. It's got to catch your attention right away. Yeah, and if you got a shitty like a shitty logo, it doesn't look good on shirts. It's like, man, yeah. you got to go back to the drawing board and exactly. You know. Yeah, exactly. We struggled slightly with it because it's kind of a complicated logo. Uh, so when we were going to make shirts, we're like, <laughs> oh, man. oh, this is going to be expensive. <laughs> you got to pay for all the colors and the gradients and all that kind of stuff. But it comes out looking good. Yeah, you it's definitely can't it. do a screen print with that, can you? We do have it screen printed. Yeah. But a couple of colors. Oh, not man. Cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, if you're doing like four or five, six colors, I used to screen print back in the old days. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I know a little bit about it. And oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, putting that together like wow. four or five, six colors or something. Oh, yeah. If you do like one or two, it's not a not an issue. But yeah, we learned yeah. that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we went from paying like a couple of hundred bucks for some shirts, you know, like just a medium size order yeah. to I think the last one was like, over 400 bucks jesus like, well inflation goes into that as well but still man I'm like yeah <laughs> that's a well they have a thing <sighs> they have a thing called dtg it's like direct to garment printing uh -huh. and actually will print a picture 
on a shirt, like a real picture. Okay, so you might want to go with that route. You know, right, that's not yeah, I have no idea. What yeah, that absolutely. Is. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, and actually, they look really cool. So okay, instead of just like screen printing and stuff like that, because I mean, it's they get once you use like four, five, six screens or whatever for the different colors. Yeah, it gets very expensive. Yeah. Oh yeah. DTG. So, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Direct to garment printing. Okay, that made it worth the ride. There you <laughs> go. Just to get that tip. <laughs> the shirts look badass too. You know? Thanks, man. So. So so what did, what's up with the name man? I heard the I know what I know what a jackalope is, right? So a jackalope is like is it like a rabbit mixed with a it, it, with an antelope ears or antelope oh, horns yeah. or something? Are shit? you are mm-hmm. you from Texas or the south? No. Okay. I've been here 30 years, so. Okay. Oh, okay. Damn. 32 years I've been here. Okay. I feel like the jackalope is well, you know how I, a national animal. You know how I know what a jackalope is? <laughs> is because if you guys go to Twin Peaks at all? Yeah. They yeah. actually had the one in Round Rock actually has a jackalope head on oh, the wall like a, ta- like a taxidermy head up there yeah taxidermy head it's, <laughs> and it says awesome. jackalope right on it okay and uh, i remember i had a friend that this i don't mean to inter- inter- no, no, interrupt good, this is it's hilarious show, buddy. i had a friend that came down uh to visit me and we brought her there right yeah and we convinced her that it was a real animal <laughs> <laughs> so she she actually thought by the time she left because i never heard of jackalope so there ain't, there's not many of them there's, not many, there's, like, there's maybe a couple hundred in the world that's it you know endangered but, species yeah. she, she thought should, it was real she's taking trips to different zoos trying to find it <laughs> you should have brought up the chupacabra after that oh man that's a real thing man i'm telling you <laughs> I don't know, but I, I, fuck, I don't know, Chupacabra, man, I've so many, heard so many stories about those damn things. But. Yeah, yeah, those pesky fucking things. <laughs> they live out in the desert. Rascals. But, oh, uh, my God. For, for, I heard about, like, a jackalope when I was, when I was, like, a kid. Uh, I used to watch America's Funniest Home Videos uh-huh. with Bob Saget. With right, right, yeah, Bob Saget. Yeah, yeah. You look Legend. like a Bob Saget. Rip. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or not. There would be, like... Like these, like I always, get, I always, I always get what is it, Freddie Prince Jr. all the time. That's what people think I look like. I, was, I could, dude. I, the I first, don't get it. The first thing I thought of was Anthony Bourdain, but like a young Anthony Bourdain. Damn. That's the first thing I thought. You're cooking of. it up all over the place. Yeah. yeah. I get all sorts of weird shit, man. I, I do when I'm out in public. People. I was actually at a club one night. Someone thought I was, um, thought I was uh, Freddie Prince Jr. Okay. Yeah, who's gonna buy me drinks all night? Freddie Prince Jr.'s here. I'm like, no. <laughs> you should have went with. I take oh, it, yeah. man. He's like the '90s heartthrob. Yeah. I, don't know, yeah. I, I don't know, man. Yeah, he's a hot piece of ass. <laughs> <laughs> so does his wife. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll, I, I need to no, stop it's, interrupting. It's, it's a pretty pointless, pointless anecdote. But I just, I just drank a Red Bull, so that's why I'm kind of a little fired up. Roll. Uh, uh, it would be like in between Bob Saget's commentary and like the home videos. Mm-hmm. It'd be like a 30 second, like, like fake, the most low budget bullshit comedy right, right. skit, and it was always like a guy in a rabbit. With like antlers, <laughs> glued to and it was like Benny Hill type shit. It'd be, right, right, right. It'd be like him like falling off a lawnmower or something. Yeah, Zach yeah, yeah. playing in the background. Yeah, dude, that's exactly what it was. So that's I was like, I, I did the same thing your friend did. My parents would tell me, I was like, what the fuck is that? You know? <laughs> They'd be like, that's that's a jackalope. You don't know what a jackalope is. <laughs> but that was my first like like foray into jackaloopism. <laughs> jackaloopism. <laughs> jackaloopism. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. The, the, our drummer is the one that actually the said band. the name. Yeah. Uh, we, we, so we used to be called Dead for Now. We were Dead for Now for about a year, which we liked, but I don't think totally <laughs> fits us. Yeah. Right, we're right. Not exactly yeah. a, a, you know, a, a deathcore band or anything like that. Yeah, I think uh, it's that like kind of name, like, sort of scared some girls <laughs> off and stuff like that. <laughs> right, which right, we, right. We don't want to do. So. <laughs> Yeah, we just had a giant whiteboard one day. We're trying to figure out names, and uh, we're kind of giving up. When you actually ad- attempt to find a name, it never happens. It's the worst, it's the worst oh, part yeah. of being in a band is finding a awful. name. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And, uh, you know, I don't know. We're, we're like, we'd basically given up, and he just randomly spits that out. <laughs> he just tossed it out. That's the second time he did that, too, because he did it for uh, Dead For Now as well. <laughs> he did. Both times he was joking and didn't think we'd run with it. <laughs> yeah, there's never a time it. where he's not joking. <laughs> I think it would be pretty easy. Like, I'm sure that nobody in the, on the planet has that name for their band. Because no, that's, that's, we couldn't find it. Uh, I mean, everything we thought was cool, you'd look, and there's two or three bands that are named that. Yeah, mm-hmm. And ridiculous. we couldn't find anybody that was called Full Metal Jackalope, so we were like, all right, we're going with it. <laughs> that's mine. <now>? That's us. <laughs> yeah. It's that's Texas. Right. It's metal. We're good with it. 
Yeah, I saw the name and I, I actually I laughed at first. I'm like, this is pretty fun. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, we get that a lot. <laughs> but it's a cool name though, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've heard a worse. It, it's it's hard to forget it, I think, yeah, once you hear sure. it. And it's ingrained in your brain. It's it's there. It gets so people just, interested. So there's nothing like really behind the full metal jackalope. It's just the name you came up with. Yeah. I mean obviously uh you know, you got a play on the full metal jacket, which, which I will say is a fantastic movie. I think oh, we yeah. all love that oh, movie. Yeah. Yeah. Who does it? Yeah. It's good. And then there's also uh the bar, the jackalope. Which, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Which used to be a really cool dive bar mm-hmm. on 6th Street about 15 years ago. And I remember. Was, yeah, I used yeah. to go there every once in a while. Yeah, and now it's kind of like... One of them... There's nothing cool down there <laughs> yeah, anymore. <I> <laughs> the yeah. other one's closed now, right? It's just, oh, the one off it's of on uh, Riverside. Riverside. Yeah. yeah. That one's gone, right? I don't... I don't. I thought I it was know. still running, but... Maybe. I we, don't know. We used to go there like three years ago. Yeah, after but, work. But we it was even more company. like... It was even more trendy and swanky than... Yeah, the one on six became. It's kind of a yeah. I got one. I got friends that won't even like play down there now. They're like, I'm not playing a gig down there. There's no, no way. Yeah. I don't blame them. You know, <laughs> it's gotten a lot tougher. Um, I mean, especially for rock stuff. There's just not a whole lot of bars down there that even host that. So I haven't yeah. been down there forever. I, I mean, I go down, when I do go down there. It's like on Fifth Street or something. Um, mm-hmm. Do you like spending money? <laughs> no, nah, that's what I'm saying. Shit. <laughs> Oh God, we we used to play Dirty Dog uh, like once all yeah. the time. I mean, just constantly. But was, it got to. I think with a lot of the bars down there, what happened was um, it's getting gentrified down there, oh, yeah. and like oh, all yeah. these oh, companies hard. are buying up those buildings, mm-hmm. and they're slowly moving, you know, the bars out. They're like charging like three times, yeah, for rent what they used to charge them, and yep. and so I'm telling you, man, my prediction. And I hate to fucking say this. But like probably the next ten years, that's going to be all condos down there. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? They're going to have high rises on Sixth Street. And stuff like no that. doubt. That's a, it's, an, it's sad. Condos and and, and Joe Rogan's bars. comedy club yeah. will be right there. You know, yeah. that's about yeah. it. Yeah, at the sure, Ritz. Man. Yeah. Want, yeah, that's uh, crazy. I want Esther's Follies to survive down there. I don't know if you've ever gone and done that. Oh yeah, I've done that a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that. That was here when I got here in ninety yeah. one. It's the same lady too that's been is it really it the whole time? Yeah. Wow, she must be like pretty old I, I, think. I, mean, I don't know man she she still gets after it though. no offense esther <laughs> yeah but that place um i mean i think aaron's rock and rolls was there and that's still there that yeah, place that is, is awesome. still there that place i was still oh, yeah. there i was there like three weeks ago but I, yeah dude oh, but yeah. i think the rest of it i don't know really what's left down there from the original sixth street if there i mean Stubbs is still around but that's like i don't know that's not even like I mean, how long has that been there for? Oh, God. I don't, I don't know. think that place will I change. No I think they'll probably keep that one. Well, they there. sold it. Stubbs is owned by another corporation now. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They sold the the whole restaurant part. And I think they I think they sold the whole thing. Wow. So the okay. place. Indirectly okay. owned by Live Nation now. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. Everything else. Well, that's what they, I mean, that's when they sold South by Southwest. Rolling Stone Magazine owns it all now. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Damn. Them and another company bought the whole thing. So I don't know who owned it. If it wasn't even owned by anybody, I mean... Well, it was its own company Mm -hmm. that Lewis Black was running. Because we went and played for him. Mm -hmm. uh, This was a while ago. A long time ago. ago. Uh, We That was a weird gig. We we went and played in a... They rented a hotel room at the Continental. I don't remember. On downtown. And uh, yeah, they were just having bands run through and play quiet sets. And Uh then Lewis Black walked in there while we were playing. And uh, a roommate of mine at the time worked for Lewis Black. And I, I think he was pretty much in charge of everything at the time. Yeah, yeah, he was in charge for a long time. That was pre-COVID, time. and then I know uh-huh. everything went to crap. Yeah, when COVID hit, it just pretty much destroyed the whole area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that that was... Or the that whole was country, crazy. excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the whole area. That's, that's an understatement if I ever had one. The whole area. That's a just downtown. Comment. Just downtown, guys. Just that, downtown. That COVID just downtown. thing, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> You know, but in the yeah. wake of that, though, there's a lot of cool stuff coming back, too. Yeah. Um, there's the clubs that have survived, and then there's, like, all these new clubs popping up and everything, so. Mm-hmm. There there was some positive that came out of that, I think. Like, like me personally, like, that's when I found your stuff, you know? Like, I, yeah. I was trying to get a uh, get a better grasp on a bunch of the local 
scene or whatever and i would just youtube and yeah like, i did i mean i did i did zooms for like i couldn't tell you yeah, how long i mean it was like those, 60 huh? of them yeah oh, yeah. Was like, yeah, yeah but it, it, those are so hard to set up you know mm-hmm. this is easy you know it's like it's it's easy to, to pull this off but yeah when you're doing a zoom or whatever with you got you're worried about people with different cameras and different oh, audio yeah. and you're doing a whole band yeah. so it's like four or five different screens along with mine yeah and everybody's got a different audio setup and different video setup and all this kind of shit it's like it's a nightmare to pull those <laughs> off it really was i could see that and it's yeah. a whole different vibe than to just sit with you in the room kind of thing and talk about stuff yeah and, because and just the, do it over the camera yeah because the problem is there's like a delay on it too mm-hmm. so everybody when you start talking over each other it's oh. like it's all it's, oh, just, it's, it's all janky yeah. Yeah. yeah city but you know it's it was out of necessity either mm-hmm. do that or die you know yeah, yeah. Or just yeah, let's yeah, not do, do it anything, yeah. so and that's what everybody was doing everybody had their little youtube shows and their little facebook live shows yeah. and yeah. Which was cool. There's you know? a lot of creativity that came out of it for sure. Yeah, and that's what I'm really bummed about now is because now that everything's kind of ramped back up again, the, all those shows have gone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a couple sure. left, and mine's one of them. You know what I yeah. mean? And and now that we're on cable access and stuff, it's going to kind of go to another level, which is kind of cool. Yeah. It's kick ass. Oh, yeah. Dude. Congrats. Yeah, this is yeah, episode this is number. Cool. This is episode number two. Yeah, Hell yeah. For Austin Music TV, <laughs> dude. I, yeah. I think your show is a perfect show to flourish on that type of platform, man. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, you've got such a good reputation. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes. Who told you that? Yes. <laughs> Who lied so, about? So many people, dude. <laughs> Yes. Like, man, that guy's an asshole. What are you talking about? <laughs> Got to drive all the way to Georgetown and go hang out with him. Fuck that guy. I think I saw Tony put a 20 in his pocket just now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, man, like, like, like all kidding aside, no, nah, man, you, you do have a, a stellar reputation. Like, we just, we've been doing it for a long time, but it was always kind of like this abstract okay let's try and book a show here let's book a show here yeah it was always like a singular like we were a singular organism and it wasn't until me me personally it wasn't until we hooked up with with Bush, bishop studios mm-hmm. Stephen bishop where i really felt like a whole scene yeah thing, which yeah. i know he's been on here before yeah he came up and we had actually a um, a benefit that i i think i emceed for him Okay. And him and Dale came up to to promote it. Cool. Hell yeah. 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 So yeah, I actually I, saw him the other night. I was over at uh, Hotspot and I saw him. Oh did really? The, yeah, yeah. Did, did he, he have the King Diamond makeup on? No, he didn't oh, have an dude, eye. Dude, I love it when he shows up at the show. I'm like, dude, fuck yeah. It's great. <laughs> but, but yeah, man. Well, like, I don't know about all that. <laughs> I got to have a talk with him. I love, <laughs> I love him to death, but damn, dude. I'm like, I'm like fucking around. Hey, he works, he's gonna be, he's always going to be He bad. works hard. If he wants to he, put on some face he, paint, he can. He, can he does, it. man. He puts on a lot, a lot of shows. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, does. Exactly. You know, I do my one show a year. You know, the mm. birthday show, the Slam Brio over, come and take a live, do one show a year. And I had, we had a really good turnout this year. And I had so many people ask me, well, why don't you do like a summer show or something? I said, you don't understand, man, how much work goes. We start this thing in June Damn. and roll it all the way to January. There's wow. so many, you know, there's so many loose ends that go with, with a show that big, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's mm-hmm. just, it's all, and I hate to say it, it's all about money. Yeah. You know, it really yeah. is. If you're dealing yeah. with a lot of sponsors, there's a lot of work. Happening. No, it's not even really the sponsor part of it. It's more like, you know, everybody wants a guarantee these mm-hmm. days. And, oh, you know, yeah, and yeah. I, I hate, and my thing is, we like to pay the bands. You know, I don't make any kind of money on that show. I, I make back what I make in, if, whatever I put into advertising for it, mm-hmm. I'll take that off the top. But everything else goes to the bands, every wow. dime of it, Man. Wow. you know, and that's the way we roll it every year. And my thing is, if we can't pay, you know, a band a certain amount or a set amount, we have a set amount. I don't want to get into, you know, money. Yeah, here. yeah, of course. And But if we can't pay them that, I don't want to do it, you yeah. know, and it's a good payday for them every year. You yeah, know, that's, so that's cool, man. That's cool, yeah, yeah, but but Stephen Bishop, on the other hand, he's doing like I don't know, like four or five shows a month, and yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, I can't work. handle that kind of schedule. <laughs> putting that, no, but putting shows together is tough, man. It really, it's not easy. No, yeah, we, it's all kudos to him. Well, I you say know? we really, really oh, Tony yeah. over here has this been guy. doing the DIY, and I love being part of you know the DIY music scene. Uh-huh. It's like a you know it's a badge or whatever that you, you know you're kind of handling it on your own, but. My God, it's been so much easier since we have <laughs> yeah, since let him get him. in there, yeah. get involved. Absolutely, uh, all these bars have just gotten hard to work directly with. I mean, they don't. Well, a lot of them are um, actually hired booking agents yeah. for them. You know, what I mean, so you have to go through the booking agents, mm-hmm. right? And then it gets, gets a little squirrely, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. So. Well, when we started, and we were like, 
in our early 20s, it's all trial and error. You don't know anything. So I'm still learning, dude. <laughs> no, seriously, man. You know, because like for this next one, because we booked like, um, you know, we tried to get national acts on all of them. But this last year, uh, it was tough because all the national acts we talked to, they wanted three times as much money cool. as they wanted – you know, because of inflation, I guess because they're trying to make up for COVID or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And I'm like kind of going, you know, hey, I love your band. And I think you guys are great. But you're asking three times as much. Even if we sold the joint out, we couldn't even pay you. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and that's not even paying the other bands. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's that's like, insane. come on now. So we just went all local this year. and We did actually very well. Cool. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I don't even remember what I was saying. Who knows? <laughs> DIY booking. That's how oh, yeah. booking yeah, goes. But, yeah, yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Working with Stephen Bishop is a lot easier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, like I said, he's got that big show coming up, right? In in March. Is oh, yeah. It, uh, we're, we're part of that. I we're, think we're, yeah. we're day one. Yeah, yeah, we're day one. Has he released on day one. two yet? Because I was wondering about that. I got kind of confused <laughs> when I saw that. No, because it's a very long post, yeah. right? Yeah. Then it has it, so it has day one, and then it says eleven bands each day, mm-hmm. and then it's like Mon- It's like a Sunday and a Monday, mm-hmm. and then but he has the event for day one, and he mentions day two, but there's no day two on it. I think there, like you said, there's so much info. Yeah, so like, many bands kinda, it had to be divided. Yeah, he's got <laughs> hashtags and all sorts of crazy I things. Think I think he tagged me in it. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just he did tag yeah. me. Because I got a thing on my my thing. It said, uh, you know, Stephen Bishop tagged you on this or whatever. I'm yeah. like, it's cool, whatever. You know, if I can help out, it's no problem. He gets yeah, hashtag. Yeah. Uh, uh, Crazy. Frenzy, frenzy, frenzy. Yeah, he's hashtagging everybody but, but Santa that, Claus on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you're supposed to do it. Uh, exactly. Yeah, do, hey, yeah. the, the way that I look at it, and I'm I'm, I'm busting balls. I mean, I, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, I have nothing but respect for him. <laughs> of course. Um, do what you got to do to get people in the door, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, if you got to go in the corner and start slinging your dick around or whatever, <laughs> fucking with a sign, get do it, man. Because these days it's tough. It's tough to get people in the door it's when super you're doing it. No, when you're doing an, ori- all, an all original, you know, uh, show, it's tough. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Tough. Do what you got to do, man. Yeah, dick slinging and dick all. slinging all okay. sorts of shit. Whatever. You know, go through a fucking windmill and shit. You know. <laughs> Hashtag dick sling. What do they call that? What was it pin? What do they call that? Fucking. Uh, Oh, the helicopter, yeah, the fucking the helicopter. Is that they call that? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Whatever. <laughs> is that what this, this is? The second episode for TV. We're not going to get fucking thrown off with this one. <laughs> That's why we're out here at ten o'clock. <laughs> I told you guys. Yeah, that was a good call. <laughs> yeah, this definitely wouldn't make it at four in the afternoon. <laughs> watch Judge Judy or the Cobra Cast. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, you flip from like. It's Jerry Springer, and you hear people talking about helicopter dick slinging. <laughs> no, there you go. I don't know. I would stay on this. I would stay on that one. I think. <laughs> the dick slinging. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Hey, someone's got to do it. It's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. Right? <laughs> I mean, I should have drank that Red Bull. <laughs> Fuck, sugar free though. Yeah, Red Get Bull. That sugar out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you guys are you guys are like headlining that, right? You're the like the last band. We are. I think. Uh, we're at a midnight we or something. Midnight, yeah, yeah. yeah. Head, headlining. <laughs> as as I've gone uh, through through the years playing music, I, I realize headlining sucks. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, yeah. it's a time it's slot too, late. man. That's a long day. That's always the worst late. part because you want to be supportive, you want to show up. For yeah, your you want to you want to be there for everything, but then you're there for you know ten hours or whatever. Mm-hmm. Doors More are usually two hours before what whatever. T- what time does it start? Is it noon or something? Yeah, isn't it? It's early. I think it's yeah. at like two p.m. Real early. I think. Well, if it's eleven bands and each band is an hour, so it's two. Yeah, it's got to be at two o'clock, right? Mm-hmm. I think Damn, that's, that's a long ass day. Yeah. Then he's got a n- the next day too. Yep. On and, a Monday, and, and I guarantee you he'll be there the entire time. I'm sure oh, he will yeah. be. Yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. Good for him. And then afterwards, kind of have like, to be. He'll like stand around and like socialize and shit. I'm like, yeah. dude, I gotta go. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta work in the morning. <laughs> like, I'm exhausted. I got shit to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got shit to do tomorrow. I got some dick slinging to do. <laughs> I got some dick slinging to do. <laughs> hashtag dick sling. <laughs> that's how we're gonna we're gonna. That's all. I can't wait to see the hashtags on this tomorrow. <laughs> I, I knew this would happen tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. You watched a bunch of them, you know. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Hey, you can't go on KLBJ and do this kind of thing. So it's true. That's no, true. It's so funny because I went up. To, we we go up there every year to Loris Lowe's show to promote our show, mm. and I and she always tells me, "Remember, no cursing. This isn't the Cobra Cast." <laughs> He's a sweetheart. We uh, what what stage is it? It's um, 
Sam Hart Ragnar's, there's a big sign on there that says, no cursing on stage. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Which I, I don't it. think anybody subscribes to at all. Yeah. Not but, seen anyone follow that rule. Yeah. <laughs> Kid friendly compound out in the middle of the woods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you been out there? I've been there once. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's, it's 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 such a drive for me to go way down there. It's like sure. San Marcos, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Sort of. Yeah. It's really kind of outside honestly. of San Marcos. Yeah. It's like the middle of nowhere. But it's a badass venue though. Yeah. But it's great. uh yeah, it is a straight up compound. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a compound. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if I see a guy, you know, trying to like... We got a cult that lives there or something or what? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, dude. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw someone like baptizing people or, there or something. In goat's blood. A, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a metal spot. There's probably some blood out there. Yeah. Sure. There, knows, there are man. a bunch of goats out there, too. That's true as well. <laughs> Sign question. on the front gate that says, uh, ignore the crazy lady that lives next door. <laughs> <laughs> she likes to complain about the noise. It's wow. a great spot. <laughs> but there's that's cool, man. There's a lot of new cool little clubs popping up. So I mean, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah, got that sure. scene over in Huddo now. There's a scene in Huddo. There's a scene in Taylor. Taylor has grown like crazy. No kidding. Same crazy. thing with Huddo too. Yeah, Huddo's exploded in the last three years. Three Kyle's, four years. Kyle's blowing up right now too, where I live. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got the Real House. Real House is cool. Yeah. Georgetown's blowing up big time. There's a couple of really cool clubs up here. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's because everybody's getting pushed out of Austin. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing, man. It's just like people can't afford to live in Austin anymore. No. Nope. Nah. It's either, you know, with the musicians, it's either move out of Austin on the outskirts or, you know, fucking play in a cover band and make a ton of money until you can live in Austin. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty much what happened to all of us. Yeah. We all, we all live yeah. on the outskirts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's why, that's why I live here because I've been here for like 20 years or, yeah, 20, 20 plus years. Huh. And uh, I moved up here because the you know the houses were cheaper up here. I get more bang for the buck up sure. here. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and now like you know the it's exploded up yeah. here, and so oh, this yeah. house is worth four times what I paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Was, I'm not going to be moving anytime soon, but you know, <laughs> if that time ever happens, yeah, you know, you it's just crazy, good. man. But the rents I hear in Austin are, you know, for like one bedrooms, and, and it's like what? That's like a that's like a a six bedroom house payment. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Crazy yeah, amounts wild. of money. It's yeah. Ridiculous, man. Yep, that's, you know? what, that's basically exactly what happened. Yep. Yeah, you know, it was either like, okay, well, let's turn into a cock rock cover band, <laughs> or uh, let's move. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much. So we all man. moved. Uh, so you guys were in Austin then? No, 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 we're out of Austin. I know, but you were at one point. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think all of us. Were. I think all of us were yeah. in Austin at one point in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, couldn't but, stay. <laughs> Would have loved to have stayed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I was in I was on Riverside for. A while and Down man. From Matt. and look how and look how that place dude, has turned around. Dude, yeah, I it's know. wild. I know. What is that over across the street from Come and Take It Live? When you're out in the front there and you look across, there's like I don't know if they're condos or they're, yeah, there's a, a couple. I actually do a lot of work with apartments and uh, yeah, there's a bunch of big mid rise style places that are all super nice over there now. Yeah, because they got rid of the uh, the bingo hall that used to be over there. <laughs> Remember that big parking lot? Yeah, they mowed that down. And every, yeah. So now when I go there, it's just this big. I don't know if it's apartments or condos or what. Yeah. That is there. It's there's, all on the uh, it's on the river right there too. You get the views and everything, and those those units are crazy expensive. Yeah, yeah. This is like right across the street. I mean, it's like yeah, when you drive, you know, you drive in, it's like right there. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it looks like it's in perpetual like construction. Yeah, yeah. Building building mode or whatever. So it looks like Candyman lives there. Like it's <laughs> kind of scary looking. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's some homeless. Crackheads. I'm just really Bay hoping that sure. I'm just really hoping that they don't force like come and take it out. You know, that at some suck. point that would suck. Yeah. I love that place. That's my jam right there. That place yeah, is that's great. A, that's a cool spot. Everything a, is great except the ramp to get on the stage. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotta watch out tall. for that. <laughs> yeah. it's tall as hell. Just like really. <laughs> but, I'll, but I'll tell you, Smack man, many for, times. A, for a club, they got their shit together. I mean, the staff is is fantastic yeah they're great the pa is great i mean you know the the room is just a great room it's cool uh i will say that's stage uh sound is one of the best oh yeah you can really hear yourself yeah whatever you want to hear they'll they'll get it going for you it's super nice yeah and they were during the pandemic they were teetering man they were like i, I heard stories going okay man this might be the last month and i don't know about this or you know if we're gonna last i yeah. mean everybody was like that mm -hmm. But then, I mean, they came back with a vengeance, and they, I mean, they upgraded everything. When you go on that stage now, it's all clean, all new carpet oh, yeah. and everything. They upgraded the PA, and yeah. Anthony just, you know, did a great job with that place. 
Well, I think they got they got a few of the people that were running Dirty Dog working there now. I yeah. think yeah. Too. Uh-huh. Oh, right. yeah, Rob, yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. Rob there. That's my yeah, boy. recently. That and the yeah, Dirty yeah. Dog, uh, the their big uh, metal like thing some. with the uh, chick with the dog biting her. Uh, <laughs> that's over there. <laughs> that's sitting up on the wall. Over yeah, that's there now. on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes me slightly sad every time I see it. Oh, I know it. <laughs> R.I.P. Well, he's yeah. got another club now. Is is it in Kyle? Um man, is it the rail yard? Rail, so yeah, rail, uh, rail house is down rail house. Kyle, excuse me. Which actually, last time I was there, Snakeskin uh, Prison was playing. You got their shirt on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got to give it up to Matt. Yeah, <laughs> Matt just had his. Uh, he had a. Uh, we we both had heart problems. Oh wow, that's no good. Yeah. Wow. So, anyways, he um, just got a an ablation done on his heart, which I had done also. I have no it's idea. Where, what that well, is. it's where. It's where they go up through your groin with like a little laser and oh. they laser part your heart that is the bad parts, I guess. And they singe it and shit like that, that it heals. Yeah, I went through that. It was pretty, pretty rough. That sounds, but anyways, that sounds, yeah. that sounds so pretty what, metal. Yeah, it's pretty metal. <laughs> ablation? Yeah, yeah. An ablation, that's what they call it. So it was Matt, Matt Ballingy just went through one. So. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Why the groin? <laughs> it's it's just like, that's the way they do it, man. Wow. It's, it's incredible the shit they can do now. Yeah, it's yeah. insane. How are you feeling now? I feel fucking fantastic. Really? Dude. Oh, Better. yeah. I had some major heart problems about a year ago, a year, year and a half ago. No mm. shit. Man. Oh, yeah. Wow. I went short, long story short, <clears throat> you know what AFib is? Yep. I have AFib, mm. and I let it kind of go for a while. It's hereditary. But mm-hmm. anyway, so when I went in, I had to go to the hospital because I couldn't breathe. So it was like a thing where I got it. I got to go, you know? So anyways, this is what happened. So anyways, I go... Long story short, I had to go to the emergency room after going to a, a, like a regular care place. Um, blood pressure was 220 over 160. I had pneumonia that was septic, Ugh. plus my AFib was off the charts. Ugh. They pretty much told me if you waited another couple of days, you would have been toast. There's Jeez, like, you would have been done. Wow. Yeah, so I, I was a hot mess. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so anyways. Bad. Yeah, so anyways, I'm, you know. After a couple of cardio versions where they shock you, they shock your heart back into rhythm. Had two of those and the ablation and fucking I'm I'm back. That's Hell awesome, yeah, man. stronger than you know, ever. stronger. Yeah. I feel better now than I have in probably ten or fifteen years. You yeah. Know? That's incredible, man. And at my age, I'm fucking fifty five now where it's like, you know, shit. You gotta watch out for that shit. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it is what it is. Well, it's weird too when stuff gets like a little bit worse as time goes on, so you don't really notice it happening. Oh yeah. And then one day oh, it's like, yeah. Oh god, I I gotta deal with this. <laughs> I gotta I gotta do this. Yeah, it's either that or die, one or the other. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the aging process is all it's so odd. Yeah, it's, so you know, rough. my thing was, you know, it's like guys think they're bulletproof. You know, mm-hmm. they really do. Mm-hmm. And so my thing was I was like, ah fuck it, it'll go away and all this kind of shit. And then it just got progressively worse. And it was the week before Christmas. Mm. Of 21, yeah. And uh, so I was in the hospital for like about a week. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Is what it is, man. Wow. Glad you're, you're Being good, alive, man. that's yeah. a great Christmas <laughs> gift, I'll tell you that. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing is, I went in, because I usually roll about 180 pounds. I was there, I was all bloated with water weight and stuff, and I was like 203. Yeah. Wow. And I lost, I lost, God, it was 20-something pounds, because I walked out of there after a week at 181 Damn. Jeez. Yeah. So I lost. It was just like just. <laughs> this is crazy. Cra- isn't that nuts? Yeah. It was 20 pounds in a week. That's, that's a two for one deal. You didn't have to go to the gym for no that. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Craziness. Yeah. That's. Hey, so how, how did this band come together? Let's get onto your shit. Enough about me. <laughs> you want to hear about me. Shit. Uh, yeah. Well, so, uh, well, I've known both these guys for a uh, good long time, but uh, I moved out here probably nine Years ago, uh, man, yeah, I know I've been here for a minute now. It's weird. From uh, where? Where'd you come from? I came from Atlanta. I lived in Atlanta. Oh, for, really? Yeah, a long wow, time. Wow, nice. There. Uh, Twenty-five years out there, but uh, awesome. So yeah, I um, came out here and was here for probably you know eight, nine, ten months or whatever. And I was like, I, I got to get in a band. I I hate not playing music. Right, right. Came here to play music, but you know, moving sucks and it takes a minute to get settled or whatever. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I just, mm-hmm. I hit up Craigslist. To, uh, to, <laughs> the classic, I was just classic that move I was just right there. That. Well, you know, I didn't know anybody here. <laughs> I was going to say Craigslist. <laughs> when I was thinking, he said it. Holy shit, that's crazy. Back I hit it up, load. you know, sometimes you find some gems on there. Uh, but yeah, I hit it up and uh, he was in a band called Scarlet Theater uh, with our buddy Sean. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, they were uh, looking for a, a lead singer, which... To be honest, wasn't my forte. I'm just a guitar player. 
Uh, but I was like, you know, I could sing. Let's go. Let's let's do this. Uh, so went out, tried out for him, uh, joined the band, and we were in that band for uh, oh, God. five, six years, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was cool. It was awesome to be honest. The music was the great. music. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, his name's uh, Sean Iredam uh, is the guy that that wrote all the music for Scarlet Theater, and it's a little more kind of uh, prog ish than we are, I guess. I would say it's it's metal, hard rock kind of stuff, uh-huh. but mm-hmm. uh, awesome music. Uh, that was very much his project, and uh, he was in charge, and uh, that worked great for a long time, and COVID happened, and he kind of moved, and that all fell apart, but uh, at some point, we wanted to just work on our own thing, mm-hmm. um, and uh, Hawk here you know, plays guitar, and uh, we were trying to actually get him into Scarlet Theater, <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, but it just wasn't quite working out, but... So we formed Dead for Now, and we were just going to do weird covers and mm-hmm. uh, all kinds of stuff. We were playing weird stuff, oh, violent yeah. Soho tune and oh, that's weird right. B-sides from Nirvana and, and uh, like garbage truck and just weird <laughs> yeah. stuff. Songs from movies. <laughs> really weird stuff. <laughs> like, uh, like but I had kind of a back catalog of stuff that I'd written, and I was like, hey, let's, let's start working on some of this stuff. And then he's got stuff that he's written, and he had stuff that he'd written. And uh, so, yeah, we just went from there and... Phased out all the covers, and now we've been. How long has uh, Full Metal been a band? Ooh. Three years, four Three years? years, I think. Yeah. Three years. Wow, it's been that long, huh? It's yeah, long time flies. yeah, but COVID didn't. Twenty twenty didn't happen. It wasn't a real year, so I don't know. <laughs> sure. that one doesn't count. <laughs> we we had just started doing live shows right before COVID. Oh, yeah, we were picking man. up. Picking Everybody up speed. was. Yeah, yeah. And, and and we were we were actually double booking with our other band. And I think we did two or three of those. Yeah. Yeah. And then COVID hit. Dirty Dog was the last show we played before everything shut down. Yeah. Yeah. COVID hit and it just Nair to return. Out. Yeah. Oh. So we we took a break because we didn't know what the hell was going sure. on. We didn't know if it was like the end of the world or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, after like three months, we're like, yeah, I think we'll be all right. So we started rehearsing again and, and basically just wrote and rehearsed throughout Feeling our COVID. way through it. Yeah. yeah. So then whenever the pan, well, pandemic didn't really end, but whenever like everything started opening up again, we were ready to go. Yeah. Like, let's, yeah. let's hit it hard. Let's play at least once a month, twice if we can. Let's rehearse every week, you know, merch, video, all that crap. Let's, let's do it. And we'll now get that we're on video your, done eventually. Now we're on the Cobra cast. So we did something right. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. We made it. We made it. We made it. I'm fixing to quit my job. Man. <laughs> we're there. <Sure. laughs> <laughs> well, I feel so special. <laughs> That's what, it's so funny because people say, "Man, it's like this is on my bucket list," and I go, "This is on your bucket list. <laughs> like, you need to improve your bucket list, man." <laughs> people think it's like, like I'm like the. It's somebody called me. Uh, I deal with the the school of rock kids and stuff, you know. Oh, cool, yeah. And one of the guy that that manages the school of rock, he calls me like the Eddie Trunk of Austin. I could see that. <laughs> he goes, yeah. hey, you're keeping rock alive in Austin. I'm like, man. I said, rock isn't dead in Austin, man. There's a lot of great rock bands. But I have everybody on here. You know, I have comedians on here and stuff. And, cool, you know, man. Should have ate, man. My fucking stomach is grown. I'll probably, <laughs> probably hear it on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Got some peanuts in here to eat or something. I don't know. Some candy or something. Yeah, man. Yeah, but, it, it, but what do you call it? Uh, yeah, COVID pretty much, you know, everybody was finding different ways to try to keep their bands together man mm-hmm. you know yeah mm-hmm. and then of course the financial part of it too you know everybody was uh you know just trying to find a ways to make money yeah. Oh, yeah. you know what i mean which is the, that was the tough part yeah you're pushing your yeah, merch I felt uh i mean it sucked for us because we didn't get to play but it's not like this is how we make our living currently I would right love, yeah. i'd love it if it was oh yeah but uh i felt bad for a lot of the big acts because i mean what were they gonna do during all that there was no money for them to make, and they've yeah. got these huge productions to cart around. And oh yeah, mm-hmm. all that stuff. I mean, just well. Plus, so they have money. they have a they have a payroll too. Yeah, the bigger yeah. bands have like you know. I think Metallica oh, yeah. has like a hundred, yeah. two hundred people yeah. on their payroll. Yeah, yeah. Pay I'm sure, Metallica's week. got an HR department. <laughs> I wouldn't fucking doubt it. <laughs> no swearing before ten p.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you got to you know that's the thing, man. It's it's tough when you have a, a an organization that big, and they yeah. pull the you know the pull the the rug from out under you you know it's tough 
the uh, AV industry took a massive hit that year too, man. We used to do AV, and the company we worked for, they were big. They're in San Antonio and Austin. Uh -huh. Once that pandemic hit, they literally shut the doors down, man. They couldn't yeah. do it. Yeah, that's what happened to, to our, our buddy Sean in Scarlet Theater. He was that was his like career. Like yeah. he has yeah. kids and a family and all that stuff. And and when when COVID hit, there's no there's no place for an AV company. They do live events, corporate events, yeah, rock and roll, all that. Like in in like a week it's was gone. gone. It's crazy. So, uh, Zero opportunity to do it. Yeah. So he was forced to move to Houston, and that, well, was, I mean, that was it. You know, the weird thing about it was that I saw it was. Was the clubs were opening up at so at one point, and then they'd be open for a week. Then yeah. it would come down again. Oh, we got to oh, close yeah. again. Yeah. So it was like this 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 wave of From you know coaster. yeah roller coaster of cl closing in and mm -hmm. not closing and opening up and closing it back up again. And some clubs were open and then some clubs weren't. And it just got to be just a fiasco. And now I mean, it looks like everything's opened up now. Oh yeah. But you know what? COVID's making a comeback right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I got so many people that. I work with got COVID. Like it's like, I think four or five people in the building got it. Really? Damn. Oh yeah, wow. big time, man. It's wow. it's all over the place. And I was, I see more like masks outside. You know, when I go out shopping and stuff now than I have in months. Huh. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, big time. People are rocking that shit again. You know. Yeah. Huh. Nobody nobody wants to get get that going again. <laughs> oh hell no, man. I don't blame anybody. <laughs> yeah. Even though you know, because I caught it. Uh, it was I think a year ago, like a couple days ago. You know, but I got the, I was, I had, you know, I've had all the shots and the boosters and all that bullshit. Sure. Uh -huh. Um, and it was very light for me, you know, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Which so is good, man. Yeah. There's a lot of people that just hit hard, man. Yeah. Especially in the beginning, man. People are dropping like oh, yeah. flies, man. Bad. You know, yeah. in the beginning of it. Yeah. Well, it we, terrible. um, I, I can't confirm this at all, but so it was January or February, right before everything like went nuts and shut down. Oh yeah. Uh, in the whole <laughs> band, we were all so sick <laughs> just yeah. every one before of us before covid was you like probably his wife it was in january and uh, yeah everybody this was before anybody was talking about it so we're just like whatever we we all gave each other something that sucks uh and then yeah everything starts <laughs> shutting down and, and it all gets terrible there, i guarantee there's like a ton of people that thought they had the flu but it was covid yeah yeah i I'll bet yeah because i went to uh, i remember i went to a school of rock event it was in december of 20 or uh -huh. 19 Cause it, it hit like twenty, right? Is it twenty? Is it hit twenty? Is yeah. whenever the end of nineteen closed. Yeah. 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 So anyways, but it was a, it was the end of December, uh, two thousand nineteen. Yeah, I had to. Finish. And I had a flu. Like you, you know, everybody there was sick. I think you know one of the kids' mothers got sick. A couple band members got sick. I got yeah. sick. My girlfriend got sick. Huh. And and I I'm really thinking it was more than the flu. So yeah. I'm thinking mm -hmm. maybe. I kind of caught that. I'm not sure if I did or not. Yeah. You know, I felt the same way. I think, yeah, it was January. I was sitting at work because I was like, man, I'm not going to lose my fucking paid time off. Like, go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no go shit. Yeah. Through it. Yeah. Right, right, right. And I just remember sitting there and thinking like, fuck, dude, this is the sickest I've been in like years. Yeah. yeah. And it lasted like a week. And then I officially caught it last summer. We officially went, caught it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we went on a cruise and like we got back. Oh, the fucking cruises, yeah, man. I don't do it. Dish. You know what? Oh, yeah, no it, kidding. it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> was it worth it? <laughs> yes, it was worth it. You do one of the rock cruises or something? Or? <laughs> no, man. It was a run of the mill cruise, but we hadn't been on vacation. He was on the Jimmy Buffett cruise. <laughs> yeah, dude, I wish. <laughs> we hadn't gone on a vacation in like two years because of COVID or whatever. Yeah. So we we're like, fuck it, let's just go. And then, you know, like, Three days later, we start coughing. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cruise ship is that's the worst, man. Yeah. I'll tell you because there were some of them that the cruise ship they had to dock like that. They, they didn't even dock. I think they were out out at sea for like yes. about two yeah. weeks or some yeah. shit. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, everybody had it, and they ran know? out of food. They, like they couldn't. They couldn't. Got <laughs> fishing poles. <laughs> 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 Dude, can you imagine that? God, <laughs> so, damn. Hey, got all the. Hey, there's a lot of fish out there. You know. <laughs> If you well, like fish, there you go. They can cook it right there, <laughs> fresh. We went we went for seven days, and like by the fifth day, I was like, all right, all right, I'm ready to go home. I can't imagine being stuck for like, I think those people were out there for like. They were there for a while. Yeah, like a month or something. Oh, fuck no. Yeah. They're freaking out, too. Then like the plumbing stopped working. Oh, or no. <laughs> yeah. That's the best part, yeah. though. You just lean over the edge of the boat. <laughs> Good God, man. Now, what, if you, what if you like shed on your dinner? Yeah. Like, <laughs> 
You have to do fishing poles, man. Great you think, get your, man. <laughs> shit, there's a lot of good seafood. I can go get some shrimp and some lobsters and shit. I don't do lobsters in the sea like that. I don't think, but. It, yeah, it turned into like an episode of Deadliest Cat. <laughs> no, no kidding, man. I couldn't even imagine that, man. Couldn't no, even yeah. imagine it. No, that would suck. It's different like if you're stuck in Vegas or something, you know, with like yeah, the whole sure. hotel. I'll, like, I'll, I'll rock that shit for a month, you know, yeah. no problem with that. Yeah. I love Vegas. It's my town, you know. But yeah, to be out at sea, I've never done a cruise before. I always wondered how I would do on it because there's a lot of people that get seasick and all that shit. Sure. I don't know oh, if yeah. I'd be okay. I'm not thinking about it. I'd be all right. I've never done one either. Me yeah. either. It just felt there's this fucking boats this are so ritzy big. guy over here. <laughs> yeah, with they're monsters, man. It's like you know, it's like an old, like a like a little island or something. You know, they're huge. <laughs> no, seriously, they're yeah, huge. Yeah, no, they're, they're like they're like floating cities. Yeah, like, they're like floating even, cities. Yeah, you don't even notice like they're rocking after like a day. You didn't see any sea monsters. Sea monsters. <laughs> no, I don't trust that. I don't trust that man. They don't know enough about the ocean. Man. But it's, I'll tell you, there's. Sh- hey, let me tell you something. There's so many species of like stuff in the ocean they haven't even discovered yet. Uh, yeah. They probably never will. Yeah, I'm not trying it's to be so the guy far down so deep. I'm telling you. Yeah, I, what's it's that, true. That thing everyone always says. It's like. Only twenty percent of the ocean has been like. Well, why would you doubt it, man? Like, I don't, I don't doubt that, but I've also never like verified that. I heard that shit in, like middle school. It's like, it's like when people are like, "Oh, you only lose use ten percent of your brain." Did you know that? Like, if you could lose use seventy five percent, you'd be like a superhero or some shit. Yeah, know. like Manson's that rib. Was, uh, that was uh, that <laughs> Limitless movie, right? I know oh, what that was man, about. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Brad Cooper. Old Bradley Cooper. <laughs> Old Bradley Cooper. There he is. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, we, we, got, we got some videos to play tonight. All okay. right. We can rattle on about all sorts of crazy shit. But <laughs> we got to get your we gotta get your music out here. Yeah. Show yeah. some videos. That's nice. And Because people are going to ask me, hey, these are, guys are pretty cool. What do they sound like? I'll be like, uh, well, you know. <clears throat> I'm the worst at describing people's bands, you know. Yeah. Then I see the guys. I, I'll, I'll say it on the air or something like, hey, you know, they sound sort of like this. If you mix this with this. Then I see the person out in public and they're like, man, my band don't sound like that. What are you talking about? <laughs> <clears throat> you know? So it's like that one of those kind of things. Yeah, when you have a vested interest in it, it's kind of... Yeah. Pe- people always... I've heard so many different bands, too. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember Scarlett telling him I thought it, it sounded a little bit like Foo Fighters and him being really upset about that. <laughs> Foo Fighters? What are you talking about? Foo, Foo Fighters? Fighters? What the fuck? I don't sound like that. <laughs> That's my Sean impression. Hi, Sean. <laughs> He's going to be stoked to hear it. So you got a video for your song, uh, Drowned. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's... uh? But these are both like like lyric videos, right? Yes, yes. they yeah. are. Love to get a full, uh, full on production video going with everything, but yeah, we're kicking we haven't quite around. gotten there yet. Yeah, that's one of our next goals. True, just to get. But the thing is, like, like we're gonna have to, you know, obviously pay for it, and we oh, want yeah, it to be money. good. We we want it to be good. Yeah, yeah. But we also know, like, with the limited budget, we can't do anything super complicated or crazy. Right. So we're just kind of brainstorming, like, simple yet effective ideas. I guess. Mm. I'll tell you, man, right here. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. I know so many bands that, like, well, if you know how to, you know, operate certain, you know, uh, apps or whatever, that come up with these videos that are just insane. Yeah, off of an iPhone. Sure. Yeah, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, you know, the tech has come so insane. Oh, you know, kidding. a lot. Do you know of a band called uh, Warm Suicide? I I keep hearing about them. They're like guys. a punk band. Yeah, and those guys do these fantastic crazy ass videos right but mm-hmm. they do them all on an ipad really the whole thing Damn. okay yeah huh. and it's it's insane maybe we'll ask him for some advice yeah <laughs> well plus, plus i got a couple production companies i can hook you up with too okay. that you know that are you know that do fantastic videos sure. but you have to work with them on budget and stuff yeah well, <laughs> what we were talking about before we started recording that guy uh the, joe, the dude who did joe rogan's studio mm-hmm. we had like an agreement Right before COVID for our video. We had a location. We had a budget. He does videos too? He was going to do our video. Oh, wow. I had no idea. (laughs) Yeah. That was the last major project Scarlet Theater was working on. And uh, we had the date set. We had everything ready to go. Yep. And then like a week later, COVID hit. Like a a week after we agreed on everything. Yeah, he's got a crew like, I think, four guys, four or five guys. He's good at what he does. I've never seen any of his videos. He I've seen his work with studios and stuff. He's done a ton of like podcast studios. Yeah, he he 
he showed me some samples and it was really good professional stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then when I saw like Joe Rogan talking about him, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he told me the story about, you know, how they hooked up and everything. And I told you a little bit of it. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's, it's nice not to have a budget. You know, yeah. yeah. There you go. Just no budget. Just do what you want. Knock done. yourself out, man. Yeah. yeah, it would have been the complete opposite with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just uh, kind of threw this room together. Got some red paint, and you know, and some, I've got eighty bucks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no shit. The room guys, looks yeah. great, man. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's in my little. This is my office, my my little man cave. So cool. yeah, right on, brother. Hopefully, we can upgrade soon. We'll see. Cool. <clears throat> I'll say. Uh, so, anyways, this drown video. Anything about this before we play it? Um. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> actually we were talking about being sick earlier. Songs about being sick. Uh, I was uh, very sick in high school uh, for a while, and um, I wrote that song. I don't know a good bit after that, but uh, a lot of the stuff I write, I I feel it can apply to a lot of people. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, at the time I had pneumonia, and you'll kind of hear stuff about that in there. <laughs> uh, that sucks. Yeah. I had that before. You can you can Ooh. relate. I know you talk about that. That's, that Ooh, by boy. itself is enough to knock a lot of people out. It's it's rough, but um, yeah, it's kind of what song's about. Uh, keeping it together, not uh, not giving up on it, all that kind of stuff. But cool. Yeah. Well, let's hit it. Here it is. Drowned. You ready? Oh, sure. Yeah. You sure. <laughs> sure, buddy. You can't see it, but you can hear it. <laughs> okay. Here it is. People drowned.
There it is. There it is. Great there song. it is, Drowned. <laughs> All right. It's a cool song. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah. Put a lot of work into it. Oh, yeah. There you go. I hope so. You had enough time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you write, so you wrote a lot of this stuff over COVID? Uh, yeah, um, some of it. Uh, that one was written before that, before we actually got together as a band. Um, a couple of them were, but we've written some since. It just yeah. kind of depends on, on where, it, where it fell, but. Uh-huh. So are you guys looking to do a record here pretty soon, or are you like just do like an EP or something maybe? Or yeah, I, I would love to do a record. Uh, we're, I mean, everything's getting made at at my house right now. I've got a little studio. That, nice, and you know, I'm doing everything and trying to learn as I go. It's a uh, it's a whole. It's like learning a new language. Trust oh, yeah. me, I know. I'm le- <laughs> oh, even yeah. with this, I'm learning something new every day. Sure, it, you know, it's just craziness. It really is. But I think I got it to a point which is, you know. Yeah, man. It's pretty seamless. I pretty think. seamless so far. Yeah. We'll have to see. <laughs> we'll see what I was, happens. Like, last week was a stress fest, man. I'm telling you, because I really wanted to stream this and record it at the same time. But, you know, the technical gods are saying, no, Bobby, it's not going to happen for you. Yeah. It so, happens. You know, it, it does. So, like I said, yeah. so the way that I'm going to do this is, like, one episode a week will go up on TV, and one episode a week will be, like, live streaming like you see it all the time where sure, it goes yeah. to Facebook Live and YouTube and Twitch and all that fun shit. So, Cool, man. That's a good plan. Yeah. So well, how many songs you guys got together already? Uh, so we've got three that are out, and we got one that we're doing right now. This past weekend, we finished up uh, getting the drums uh, initially recorded. So we'll build from there. Bass will come in next, and then we'll get guitars and vocals and all that kind of stuff on there. Right now, it's all scratch tracks, but... It's usually like a month-ish. Month-ish. Uh, to get it going, we, we kind of had some rewrites on this one, so it took us a little bit of extra time to do the uh, the drums, but okay. it's coming together. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot faster than anything else we've played. <laughs> yes, so you guys recording good. recording at the house? Yeah, so I've got a little studio I built in there, and uh, I've got a kit set up in there, mm-hmm. and everything's mic'd up, and I built a janky you know, vocal recording booth with PVC and blankets. And Nothing <laughs> wrong with that, man. He's got the coolest home studio I've ever seen. It's pretty you need, sweet. You setup. need to elaborate on that a little bit. It is cool. Uh, <laughs> we we got the house, and one of the reasons that we chose this house is because it just has this extra room that kind of doesn't go anywhere. It's just like off of the uh, master, but. Uh, I ripped out the doors and uh, I put in a bookcase so you don't know it's there anymore. It's hidden behind a bookcase. Nice. <laughs> you got a <laughs> secret room. You got to pull a book to uh, get it to open nice. up. Yeah. It swings like open. Like a bat cave. Yeah. Yes. You walk in and I've got all the guitars up on the wall, wood paneling and all that stuff. Drums are in there. So it is yeah. cool. I'll admit. <laughs> Robert is not welcome. Yeah. No. <laughs> It's hidden. They'll, they'll never find it. You know, it's not really, that bookcase. You know what? I know a lot of people. You know where they do vocals? Hmm. In their bathrooms. Yeah. Hmm. They there's so many I don't know what it is about bathrooms, maybe because like bathrooms aren't carpeted and they have like tile and stuff and the the sound in the bathroom is really, really good. You can relax in there. I guess you can. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to think when you're singing. Like two two schools of thought on the vocals, which is get them ridiculously clean with absolutely no environment whatsoever and then add all of it. Or get in a cool spot that just yeah. sounds good and, and get it done. So that's how it is. This room is kind of crazy because I, I'm always tweaking all the time, and I got it to a point now um, where it sounds amazing. So when you listen to the audio podcast, it just sounds so good. Yeah, cool. awesome. I listen. I just listen to them now. You know, the past couple, two, three, uh, just because it sounds good. <laughs> you know, not even like listening to my own voice or anything. I'm like, man, this just really sounds good. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, but you know, it, it take everything takes work. You know what I mean? Sure. So, and if you have a home studio, I mean, it's like you're not you're not spending money on studio time. You could be in there as long as you want. Studio it's, time is absurdly expensive. Oh, it's craziness. I know <laughs> I know people with studios that actually you know like real recording studios, yeah. and it's like the prices are just hmm. you know you you but you pay for what you get. You know what I mean? Sure, absolutely. You know, so we did uh, we, we did, did one firehouse. thing. Yeah, yeah firehouse. Uh, wait, it was fire station. Fire, fire station, station studios down in San Marcos. Uh huh. We recorded place, yeah. a uh, demo down there. That's a super cool studio. Uh, we got lucky because he had a buddy that that we knew and didn't hardly charge us anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's our only like real studio time. Anything else has just been made at my house. <laughs> that's good though, you know. A whole other element of that though is that like you're in there and you're impressed. You're in this weird environment, but you're also like kind of me. I was like anxious, like damn, like this is so <laughs> awesome and so yeah. impressive. But it's like, oh, I got to get this down. Like we have this limited amount of time. 
uh, recording yet, Danny. He's just like it's so comfortable. Well, yeah, that's the thing is you're comfortable. Like it's like yeah. I, it's like me being in this room. I'm comfortable in this room. Yeah, you know? exactly. <clears throat> it's like you know if I go do you know a podcast in another studio, I'm kind of get kind of weirded up because yeah. I'm not used to the room, you know. But if you're if you're like recording at your house, it's like so much easier, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah, you get distracted. Like like right now, you got a bunch of cool shit around. <laughs> <laughs> I keep you know, it's the you know it's the belt though, right? That's the uh, first thing, dude. I'm a wrestling fan, so yeah, that's, that's a real belt. It that's, looks real, man. It, no, it's fucking it's the real deal. I got it, it, the same company that does the WWE belts and the UFC belts made, made well, that. They made that. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. super cool. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. How do the you number win one? It? The number one podcast in Georgetown. Awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, there's only like six of us, but I'm number one. <laughs> Way to bad, dominate. <laughs> The International Brotherhood of Podcasters <laughs> presented that to me. So no shit. Yeah, when everybody's doing their Spotify numbers, you know, yeah. like they do in December, uh -huh. that's when I got that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome, congrats. man. Because my Spotify numbers aren't really all that cool. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, hey, you name me another podcast has got a belt. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right. our Spotify numbers aren't that great, and we don't have a belt. Yeah, so every yeah. so all the shows that I go to, I I, I wear that. So I just wear it around my, yeah. when I go to the shows. And no shit, man. People take pictures with it and stuff. You should do uh, like some face cool. paint or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. I don't know about all that, but, you know. <clears throat> yeah, man. Just dress up like a wrestler. That'd be cool. And then there you go. <laughs> yeah. No, it just, it's, it just sits up there. I don't. It's cool. Uh, I'm looking at all the uh, all the posters of a uh, bunch of bands we've played with. and Yeah. You, with. Know, you know the weird thing about this? I have so people bring up stuff all the time. And this is all the old stuff. <clears throat> I gotta, I gotta apologize, man. My, my allergies are kicking my ass. And so here a lot of me coughing of and stuff. It's like, man, Jesus. If it ain't mold, it's the weeds. If it ain't the weeds, it's the clovers. <laughs> it ain't the clovers. It's the the it's dust in the air. Cedar. It's oh, the it's yeah. the what, do you, what was the, the the train thing? No, not the angel dust. What oh. was it? The, uh, <laughs> the Saharan the Saharan dust. Saharan oh, dust. Oh, yeah, angel yeah. dust. Yeah, <laughs> dust. <laughs> the Saharan dust. The Saharan it, man, dust. It's, it's always something in your in Texas. <laughs> yeah, you know? there's always something that's like alarming, no matter what. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but anyways, um, I, I have so much stuff that I need to kind of like take a lot of the older stuff down and put the new stuff up. Because I feel bad, you know. I'm like, man, I got all this new stuff. I need to kind of, you know, I've, I've, you know, this stuff is back from 2016, 2017. A lot yeah. of it's, you know, you some newer stuff or whatever. But I got so much stuff. I got to just redo the whole room with the stuff that I have. You know, <laughs> it's yeah, good man. to see a lot of these guys are still playing. Though. Oh yeah, they all are pretty much. Yeah, it's nice. I love yeah. seeing those Texas Miss posters, man. That was the first place I know. we played at. Uh, rip. <clears throat> Oh, oh man, man. Oh, I fucking yeah. love that play. Yeah, Jim uh Jim Ostrander with that place. Mm -hmm. Wang Dang Sweet Poon Tang. <laughs> <laughs> that venue was so comfortable to be at. You know what's yeah. cool about that place? It was like Jim was was so cool to the bands and he let you do anything you wanted to. Hey man, yeah. uh can we yeah, I got like uh pyro. Can we do pyro? No problem. Go <laughs> ahead bring it in. But he was so good to all the bands and yeah. you know, he was good to me and everything. Yeah. I, you know, we helped each other out. Yeah. Uh, I I haven't seen him in, in a in a while. I saw him at a um at a benefit maybe a couple two three four months ago. Okay. Um, but yeah, since the miss folded, I don't I don't know what he's doing now. Yeah, I don't think we've seen him since the last time we played there. I think he's just working now. I mean, I I think losing that club really like fucked with him. Like oh, of mentally. course he did. And I, yeah, yeah, I don't too, blame man. him at all. <laughs> you could tell he loved that place. Yeah, yeah. that was a, yeah. That, that was the home base for a lot of bands. I used to oh, love yeah. going down there. You oh know? yeah, yeah, that place. Like towards the end, it was hard to get into because the, all, the, all oh, the construction dude, down yeah. there, man, yeah, it was a nightmare sucked. getting in there. Yeah, and, that, uh, and uh, what was the brewery right next to it? Uh, oh god, I forgot. I never, I never went. Was it High Sign? Maybe. But I think that that brewer ended up shutting down. Oh, too did it really? Because you couldn't get to it. Oh wow, it's mm -hmm. ridiculous, man. I still think it's hard to get into that stuff over there. I haven't been over there in a hot minute, so it's every because yeah, I don't go that way. Every time I go to the airport, I take the toll road and go straight down to the airport. Yeah, yeah. So I really don't go down to that um, area. I haven't been on that area in a while. But I I think that place burnt down. Did it? Texas Miss? It actually caught on fire and burnt down. I saw him post something about that a month or two ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sucks, man. That's that's just like another nail in the brutal coffin. You yeah. know, no like, kidding, it, like yeah, obviously dude. I don't think it was going to come back, but still seeing that, yeah, that, uh, that place, we had such good times. We at had and, so many good times in that place, yeah. man. God, the, actually the first birthday show was, we actually did there like in 2018. Damn. Wow. You know, wow. then it got moved over to come and take it live after that. Uh huh. 
But uh, yeah, there's I mean, there were so many great bills over there. You oh, know, yeah, yeah. those shows are always a ton of fun. I feel like we always were wearing something stupid every time we played. That. <laughs> yeah, we did. Am I remembering that correctly? I think we had like one normal show and everything else. We had something uh, stupid. Yeah, that was yeah. the first show. We were the too. Ninja Turtles one time yeah, for Halloween. <laughs> and uh, we played the theme song from the 80s show. <laughs> yeah. We did and, that uh, uh, the show when everyone stormed Area Fifty One. We put on. Oh yeah, we wore oh, we we alien masks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I made a sign that said "Clap Alien Cheeks." <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't make it too far with that one. And what <laughs> happened? Somebody I can't remember who, but I remember I ended up with two alien masks with my stuff the next day, and I was like, "Okay, this one's mine. I can tell." And the other one like had vomit all over it. Like, <laughs> oh no! Did we find out who that was? I have no clue. Not mine. So either you guys aren't fessing up, or, or it was obviously just a drunk it. alien in there. <laughs> <laughs> the best one ever was, I don't know if you ever saw the video that Jim put out. He was going to the mist like on a either a Saturday or Sunday morning, and there was a, a car parked next to the dumpster, <laughs> so and shit. some chick was like, <laughs> Up in the woods, either taking a shit or peeing or something. What? And he what? went live on Facebook. And he went live on Facebook. With, he goes, he goes, hey, does your mother know that you're taking a shit behind my dumpster? He goes, he goes, you know, that's, and he goes, oh, he goes, you couldn't, you couldn't take your girlfriend or someone else's wife to, to like a, you know, uh, to a gas station to take a shit behind. You had to, you had to pick my dumpster to take a shit behind. I was fucking crying. Dude, I, saw I was rolling. That oh was my so god. Funny, man. I wonder oh, if that's man. still up. I probably. I'm sure if you go to, I'm going to find out tonight. Yeah. He goes, you know, he goes, yo, this is my place. He goes, like, this is my place. You, you know, there's a there's a gas station right down the road. Why did you pick my place <laughs> to take a, for her to take a piss? Or, I can't remember if she was taking a dump. I don't or remember. If he was either. pissing or whatever. I just remember he starts in the parking lot and he's like, everyone look at this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago, yeah. man. But I'll never forget. I was crying when I saw. I watched that thing. I must have ten of the ten of. Oh, 10 man. or 12 views was mine because I watched that thing over and over <laughs> yeah, and over again. That, so that was so funny. funny. And the dude was so embarrassed. He goes, oh, I'm sorry. Or whatever, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't, I, you know, we thought that it'd be okay. And, <laughs> what the, what, how did you think this would be okay? Taking a shit behind my dumpster. Because it was like a little wooded area right yeah, there. So I don't know if she was behind the dumpster or whatever it was. Yeah, but. I mean, that, that place was halfway in the woods. Yeah. 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 Oh, my God. It was so funny. We, <laughs> we got double booked there one time. Did you really? Yeah. So we played behind the club <laughs> like outside like behind the club he well, literally, he literally the went and uh they they had um they had the stage inside but then outside he'd like halfway built a little oh, riser yeah. i don't know if you remember that I think but that well, was he a built, stage for a well, while he, well he had a metal fest out there it was it was in like january mm -hmm. and it was like it's supposed to like two days or whatever but he built that outside stage for that yeah so oh, i don't know man. if it was um what do you call it? If it was ready or, or not, or you know, definitely wasn't ready when we played. <laughs> oh, okay, no. we he ended up uh, he he kind of disassembled it and made us just a platform. He, he took like two pieces grass. of plywood. <laughs> yeah, just laid it down flat. <laughs> but the sound guy was so cool that night. We sounded good. We we're like, fuck it, let's just do it. And, <laughs> well, we had, and the weird thing about that club, that's where everybody hung out was outside anyway. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. There yeah. were so many bands that used to play there. You used to get so pissed off because. Everybody would go outside and smoke and hang outside, and no one was watching the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a good crowd that night. We did like a big crowd. Cool. Actually, crowd I like night. being on the same level as the audience too. Do you? I do. Just I, I like I like walking around, especially if I can get my wireless rig going and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Back before uh, in Scarlet, when I just sang, if I had a break or there was a solo or something, I just walk off and run out uh -huh. of the crowd and mess uh -huh. with people and stuff. Yeah, I, uh, I like doing that. You get on some of those huge stages, come and take it and stuff, and. Oh, yeah. And I'll break a leg if I jump off of that stage. <laughs> you can't jump off of that stage. No, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's huge. You got to clear the barrier, and it's about four feet up. So, yeah. Make for a good story, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah break your neck. Are, I'll pass. <laughs> the Ison's are crazy stuff. Yeah, you definitely don't want to jump off the stage and come and take it. It's yeah, like, yeah, it's like pretty not steep. good. Mm -hmm. or, or run down the ramp with a guitar. Oh, knock myself out. Yeah, that ramps a little. Yeah, that ramps a little rough. I'm used to it now because I do a lot of shows there and stuff. You yeah. know, not do I MC a lot of stuff. You sure. know, oh, and cool. I'll do my show once a year, and I'm kind of used to that by now. But a lot of people, man, it's like dunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why they have that bright tape up there. That, that's what it's for. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the only like advantage of being vertically challenged like yourself and I. Like, I've never, I've never had a, I thought the fucking ramp was great, but this guy. He's just some really tall guy goes up there and bonk, watch out. 
Some good terminology there. <laughs> Craziness. So what do you guys got for shows coming up? Uh, we got a good bit of stuff coming up, actually. Uh, we got a couple coming up in March. And we talked about um, we're playing that thing for Bishop. It's uh, uh, That's on the 12th. Let's get up on that mic a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. you go. You got cool. it. Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, the shy. thing on the 12th for Bishop, we're uh, playing at... That's Commentate. Or no, that's at that's Kickbutt. A, Kickbutt. 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 Mm-hmm. And then, that's uh, a good little place. I like that. Kickbutt Dude, rules. Fun, man. And I'll tell you what, their food is awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah it Holy is. moly, man. Oh, yeah. Food's I bought a good, sandwich drink's there. good. Yeah, I bought a sandwich. I don't remember what it was, but I'll tell you what, man. It was a for bar food. It was oh, fantastic. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Well, the the sound there is like the best at That's like any great, local man. club. That guy, uh, the sound guy there, is, his name's Eddie. And yeah, he rules. Yeah, uh, and plus, the, I mean, they do a great job streaming this stuff too. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I oh, think yeah. he's got two separate mixes running too because he's got his front of house mix and then he makes a separate mix for the streaming. Yeah, and everything mm-hmm. sounds awesome. Yeah, it sounds great. He's real good at throwing effects on randomly when you ask him to or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He changes the camera on the stream. If the drummer's doing something cool, you get the overhead camera. Yeah, he's got, yeah. Yeah, the first time we worked with him, first time we played there, he sh- he showed up like literally five minutes before <laughs> we were supposed to start. So the whole time we're like, dude, where is this guy? Because we've dealt with some like oh, yeah, yeah. fucking insane people as sound guys. <laughs> But uh, he walked in, and we were like, okay, dude, sound check. And he's like, nope, just go. <laughs> but it sounded incredible. Yeah, it sounded he's great so on stage. That's the job. first time I've ever had a sound guy decline a sound check. <laughs> yeah, he's like, nope, you're good. Just go ahead. Okay. Right. Well, the, I mean, there's some clubs, like, you know, you go over, you guys, have, you guys played Hanover's yet? We have. Oh, yeah. Not too oh, long yeah, ago, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. There yeah, was yeah. one guy that worked at Hanover's, and I don't think he's there anymore. He had that room dialed in, dude. Mm. Oh, yeah. And he would do, I mean, the sound checks would be, like, 10 seconds, huh. you know? Damn, okay, huh. play the kid a little bit. Oh, okay, I got to say, you know. <laughs> and play the guitar. Wah, okay, you're good. Uh, bass, boom, boom. And, it, and then we'd go, and that was it. I mean, he was so quick with that stuff. But, you know, if you're a sound guy and you work the room, like, constantly, yeah. of course you're going to know sure. how, yeah, the, how it works. How, you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had good sound there. I, I think we played, did we play twice there? Or is it just Hanovers? Once? Just once I've so far. Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> <January>. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we had good sound there. That was like a month played, ago. Uh, played with our buds in uh, Seventh Legend, I think, that night. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, Chris yeah. Litz. Oh, yeah. That guy's awesome. Chris, he's, Chris a, awesome. he's another Craigslist guy. <laughs> <laughs> he got thrown off a of Craigslist. What? <laughs> what do you mean? Ask him. Ask him. What? You see him next time. Okay. I'll have to, I'll have to hey, hit hey man, Bobby, Bobby Sharon said you got kicked off a of Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> he was on Cra- oh, I'm gonna. T- I know I'm going to tell this story wrong. <laughs> I've, you gotta you gotta realize I've known Chris like since like 1995. I've known him you know wow. forever. I've okay. known, our old band used to run together all the time. Cool. But um, so he was trying to put the Seventh Legend project together forever. Man, I mean like at least ten years. Man, I'm, I'm kind of guesstimating. But every time I would see him, it would be like you know, hey, you know any drummers or you know any <laughs> any singers? I'm, we're trying to get a female singer. And every time I saw him, it would be the same thing. You know, he would get someone that wouldn't work out. He'd have a drummer come in, that drummer would work out, and then next thing you know, the bass player's gone, and then, yeah. he, then the other drummer's gone, and then, then you know, the, the chick singer's gone, and it was this big hot mess. But he would be on Craigslist all the time. <laughs> and I think he got reported on Craigslist for harassment or something. All was, the ads or something? No, it, for, he had a ton of ads. I don't know what exactly what it was. So actually, he's a, he said, fuck Craigslist. He went on like Facebook and created this, like, this, this, um, like, this group, this, this news group about, you know, Looking for awesome musicians, it was like a like a like a bulletin board kind of a thing. Yeah. Hmm. So he started that, but yeah, okay. he did a lot of his stuff on Craigslist. I remember him getting wow. thrown off of there <laughs> or flagged. Or he got flagged. Or, you got to ask him the story. Yeah, dude, I'm definitely. We, we we play with them fairly frequently, as so well. We'll have to hit him up. And about it's, it. yeah, it's never planned. It's just randomly. Like, yeah, he's a good dude. He's a great group. guitar player. Too. Oh yeah, he's awesome. yeah, his stage presence is awesome. He, uh, he, and he doesn't grow old. He looks like a kid. Yeah, and he's my age. <laughs> yeah, the first time I talked to him, like up close, I was like, oh wow, okay, because <laughs> he's insane on stage. Oh yeah, he's not. Yeah, Endless yeah. energy, like oh yeah, we did Anderson Mill Pub. Is that what? It is? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we Mill, did. Yeah. We did that like three weeks ago, I something think so. like that. And he was going so crazy, like I guess he didn't see the drum riser behind him, <laughs> and he hit it. But this dude, his recovery was so quick, like he. Felt and then was instantly. Well, he's in back. shape. I mean, he's still he, in good shape. He never yeah. stopped playing either. He's like on <laughs> yes, his back and just pops back up and yes. also plays the whole time. It was super impressive. Yeah, <laughs> we we did the video episode and we played their video on it. 
And we're trying to figure out if he's got a it was like a seven string or an eight string guitar he's got. I don't know. Man. I know the it's bass like player's got like a it's like a I think an eight <laughs> string or something yeah, like that. Yeah, or, that guy's awesome too. Or six no, it's a six I think, I think, I think he's got a six bass. string bass. Six. six string bass and yeah. Chris has got at least a seven string guitar. Yeah. yeah. Well he, he switches too. I feel like one's a seven and one's yeah. an eight. Yeah. Or maybe one's a six and one's Good a seven. Oh lord, man. Fuck an eight string guitar. Yeah. I I get the twelve string thing, you know. I understand yeah. that. But yeah. when you got like it's like eight strings like in a row Sometimes kind of a thing. You the neck be must heavy, be like this man. on it, right? <laughs> Did you see, I guess, since Dusty Hill died from CZ Oh, his, uh, the bass Did player? Did you see that guy? He's got this. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm a big gigantic. ZZ Top guy, and he, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I, Dude. <laughs> they just played a gig. They had they had a, a, a residency over at the Venetian in Las Vegas. Yeah. Okay. And he comes out. The first song comes out, and this bass I guess it's a basic. The neck on it was like this wide. <laughs> it <was> yeah. Huge. <laughs> yeah. And it, it had, I don't know if it's guitar strings or bass strings. I don't know. Because when you watch him play, he plays the top, then he plays the bottom, and he plays the top, and plays yeah. the bottom. So I don't know what kind of. It's like neon yellow. Dude, it's it's seriously probably well, that, like 20 strings. That whole band, <laughs> because the, the drums too are huge, massive drum kit. Right, yeah, yeah. But it's ZZ Top. Like, what do they need all that for? <laughs> I love cool. ZZ Top, but it's not complicated <laughs> music. Like, <laughs> Oh, they're a great band. I was oh, yeah. watching that when you guys came in. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what I was watching. Here we was we went to see them in LaGrange, the only, oh, time they've, yeah. the only time they've ever played LaGrange. Really? This was like six or seven years ago. Yeah, they made it a huge deal. They're like, all right, we're fucking rich. We've done <laughs> they everything. They played LaGrange like 20 times? <laughs> So, they're they're like, this song, let's play the song over and over again. So, it was just Lagrange for the so, whole show. Yeah, the Lagrange show. We live out in Elgin, and Lagrange isn't too far. We're like, fuck it, man, let's go. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the whole town came out. It I was like doubt a, it. Yeah. they had like a fucking roller coaster, and they had a car. What are those things called? The Ferris wheel. Like, oh, yeah. It was a whole festival, and everything yeah. was ZZ Top thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was badass though. They sounded great. They're a great band. Yeah. I mean, they've been out for 50 years. That's insane. Yeah, but I don't know about that bass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's, it's a... Huge. Well, he... he Because uh, when Dusty Hill passed away, uh -huh. that guy's name is... Um, the new guy? Yeah. I have he's no like, idea. What, El, was it Elwood? Well, it's one know. of the Blues Brothers' names. Elwood. That's his name. <laughs> Elwood. one really? of the Blues Brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyways, he... Fuck, I don't... He, that bass, dude. I don't, I don't know what it is. I've never seen anything like that. It, ha Huge. it has to have bass strings on it because he's playing bass. Because he's playing bass. But yeah. the way he was kind of playing it, it was like he was playing the top strings and he was going to the bottom. But the neck, I swear to God, <laughs> dude, was that yes. thick. Yes. Huge man. Yes. It's so I'm still trying to figure that out. I don't know. I have know. to check it out. I, 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 I've, I've missed this somehow. Yeah, I just go on, you guys. go on YouTube. I saw it. Go on YouTube and look up uh, ZZ Top uh, Venetian Las Vegas. I'll check it out. And it's, it has it's, the whole set on it. And it's ridiculous. the very first bass that he plays. <laughs> if you want to call it a bass. I don't know what the hell you want to call it. It's the monstrous like a spaceship or something. Yeah, it's some huge. crazy shit. There's no check it out. I, uh, I, do, I love Billy Gibbons. That was a, a big influence for me early on. Oh, yeah. Playing guitar. Um, Gib head. You're a Gib head. Love him. Well, he, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, he's like one of those guys like Stevie Ray Vaughan where he'll play the same note nine times in a row, but it's awesome for some reason. <laughs> Just, he's Billy Gibbons. That's all it is. <laughs> he's a fucking man. Yeah. He uses seven uh, gauge guitar <laughs> strings, which is super light. Huh. I cannot imagine I could last more than one song without snapping them. In half. He was, he was Jimi Hendrix's favorite guitar player. He talked about that yeah, in yeah. LaGrange. Yeah. yeah they covered cool. uh Foxy lady. Oh, and he, he gave like a five minute story about playing with Jimmy and saying, Hey man, they're in a hotel. He's like, Hey man, how do you play that lick? And he's like, I'll show you what it is now. And he <laughs> fucking went into Foxy lady. It was uh, that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, they're still they're still kicking, man. They're going to be around for a lot longer, I think. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, my uh, my parents are actually going to see them in Atlanta. <laughs> nice. Uh, in, I don't know, a couple months. They're nice. playing with another big band too. Who's it? I don't remember. Man, the la I haven't seen them in a while, man. But I remember seeing them. It was like ZZ Top and Leonard Skinner. I think I saw them at yeah. the Irwin Center like Perfect. years ago. Oh, Perfect wow. combo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Last you know, time, uh, I last time I saw it was actually just Billy Gibbons. He was playing. Uh, he had a group with him and Gary Clark Jr. and well, that's uh, cool, like a super group. Yeah, but they, they play like Antones and stuff. Well, they did. Yeah, and they did. Uh, it was Blues on the Green. Oh, was uh, it? Which uh, God, is such a nightmare to go to. Now I can't <laughs> oh, bring myself God. to do it anymore. But it was a great show. I had two great guitar players. I saw they just announced the free South by shows for Auditorium Shores. Oh, I just that? I don't even I don't know. <laughs> I didn't recognize. <laughs> well, that's the only thing. 
that's the only thing I go to every year because, like, I, you know, I don't want to be on Sixth Street. I mean, usually, I don't know any of the bands yeah. that are playing. Yeah. You know, it's really weird. I went through the Austin Music. Uh, they had the Austin Music Awards last night. I guess right. I don't. Was that last night? Yeah, and we, I didn't know we anybody. Yeah, no, I didn't know anybody here. that won the. Even the nominees, I didn't hear. Never heard any of them. Does yeah. it? I knew, I knew like two or three out of all the categories. Eric yeah. Johnson like wins every year though. No, <laughs> no, it was Hello? the people that Damn, won. I don't know yeah, how man. they. Pick, I don't know how they pick the winners for these things. Yeah, I'm like going. You gotta be kidding me, man. <laughs> no offense. I mean, no offense to any of these people. Yeah, but there's there's some of them that I. I'm gonna say some. I, I think I knew out of all the categories. And there must have been 20, 25 categories. Uh-huh. I knew maybe three of the winners. Yeah. Or heard of three of the winners. Yeah. And all the nominees, I never even heard of the nominees. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. That, is the opposite. I don't, I don't know if you pay attention to the Grammys at all. But, oh, uh, what, a, what a fucking. Oh, what my a, God. What a Joe. horror show the, that is. The, the, <laughs> rock, the rock acts that are nominated, it's like. Metallica and Ozzy and like why are we they've done it already can yeah. we get some somebody new in here like no but this? even for the I mean who did they have I watched the whole thing this year yeah and I'm just like going you got to be kidding me man <laughs> fuck it's just no but it, it's all it's all hip hop stuff now you know yeah yeah. Yes. yeah and some of the stuff that's like out there it's like I mean this is ridiculous I mean no offense I mean. It's like if you took auto tune away from half of these people, they couldn't perform. I <laughs> they mean, got you know nothing. I mean? It's it's they got damn. nothing. It's true. There was a viral video a couple of years ago where this dude was like, he's like, you want me to teach you to play a chain smoker song? <laughs> and he had one of those keyboards that had like four keys we, on it. We watched this together. <laughs> I think you showed it to me. <laughs> <laughs> and he, it sounded exactly like that. <laughs> Are they a band? I don't. I don't know. It sounded exactly like them. Yeah, not but, but I think when it comes to like even like the Grammys now. I think the Grammys are just the rock stuff is just gone. It's, you know, the rock, the metal stuff is gone. Rock stuff is gone. Yeah, um, it's all hip hop and a lot. I saw a lot of country this year. Yeah, a lot of country played. You know, country's, and, country's barely country anymore. It's not dude. country it's like, though. Yeah. It's, it's sort of. I call it. I call it the the. What do you call it? The, the bedazzled country, <laughs> which is like everything's got everybody's got like rhinestones on their butts and you know all the bedazzles and shit. <laughs> it's terrible, man. But it's like but it's like pop. Yeah, all it's the country is like pop. Now. It's all pop. Everybody's pop. There's a lot of rap country out there too. Oh yeah. my god, Hick-hop. I don't know where they're coming up with this shit. <laughs> hip hop is what they call it. Yeah, hip what? Hip hop. Hip hop. That's a hip hop. This is what I've heard. That makes me hate it. <laughs> Although even that more. that song "Rhinestone Cowboy" is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's Conway Twitty, right? Well, yeah. Rhinestone Cowboy. Yeah. That's that's uh, that's um. Fuck. Uh, no, no, I know. I, I can see the guy's face. He he died. He had, he died of like um, uh, Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell. Glenn go. Campbell. Dude, he was an awesome guitar player. Yeah. Yeah, and a, and a movie star and like a great yeah. singer. But dude, if you watch like some of his, he died a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. If you watch some of Parkinson's, his, I think. Oh, that's that's a terrible horrible. one. <laughs> well, my dad died of that too. So yeah. Oh man, I'm yeah. sorry. It's a bad way to go. Yeah, but they had a documentary about him in his last couple of years of his life because they actually had him on the road. That's fucked up. Yeah, and it was like you know they were he was trying to get through shows and you know he would he would get on stage and actually play, but in between tunes he would kind of be you know flipping around. He's kind of like uh, he didn't know where he was. Right. Yeah. yeah, in a weird th- way, that's kind of comforting, like knowing that that muscle memory like that yeah. stays. But then it got to a goes. point where all that went away too, and they kind of had they just oh, said you know this cut is, it. yeah they just cut the tour. That mm. sucks. It's a pretty good documentary. It's kind of sad, but you know I've heard about it because I heard that last single that came out. It was like super sad, and it had footage from that documentary. I can't remember what it was called though. Hmm. But uh, I've read stuff like on on Reddit forums and stuff where people were saying they think something similar was going on with Ozzy, like Sharon was just Ozzy's oh. got Parkinson's now, but now he's like officially retired from performing live. Yeah, well, but out. then but then you know a, a week later he goes, I'm going to try to find a way to get back out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, <laughs> can't help himself. <laughs> you know, it's all he knows. Know, I get it, but it's like you know what it's. To go out there in the state that he's at now, yeah, you know, and I know he loves performing, and I, I and I get it, I do. It's hard, it's hard for him. I mean, that's all he knows, right? Yeah. But to go out there, he he's not going to be able to get through a two hour show. No, nah, you know, know, if you watch the he he played a halftime show, um, for some football game or some shit, mm-hmm. and 
he came up out of the floor and he didn't move. He just stood there. I think they had like he had, they had him tied to a stick or something. Oh, <laughs> you know, I read about that. They, yeah, yeah, it, they said it, he, they didn't even televise it. Damn, really? Was that bad? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I, I saw the video of it. It's just, I mean, and you see him now. He's walking with a cane. He's yeah. got all white hair. And he yeah. looks like a little old man. And it's like, dude, crazy. But his wife wants to get him back out there, and it's yeah. like. Come on, man. Yeah. Just what are you trying to prove? Let, let the guy. Let the you know. Let him he, chill. He's got more money than Jesus. You know <laughs> what I mean? He's he's rich. He's rich beyond rich. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Let him go travel the world. You know, and see the places that he couldn't see before. When, when you're on tour, you don't see places. You're in and you're out. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Let him just live the rest of his life, man. In in just in peace. I don't know when I'm a when I'm an old man like that. I want to be like. Sitting in front of a fire with like a dog at my, my dude. Feet. I'm gonna be doing this to the end, man. I, I, don't give a fuck. I can see that. Yeah, I can Shit. see that. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be really. We were talking about that the other day. We had we had, uh, I was having lunch with a friend, and he goes, "Man, what? He goes, you know what's gonna happen, dude? You're gonna be like having all these young bands on. You're gonna be that creepy old guy, <laughs> you know, you fucking oh, you're on episode number three thousand and fifty eight or whatever it is. You know, you're gonna be fucking eighty years old." <laughs> You'll be that creepy old guy, and people aren't going to want to come up to your house to see you anymore. And you know, they'll be like tied to that chair, just holding pretty much. Like <laughs> <laughs> Girl, and be able to talk, spitting all over the mic. And stuff. <laughs> God, I'm going to rock this shit as long as I can because I almost, I, you know, I was supposed to retire in January. Really? Uh, oh, yeah. I told I was going to put it down. Uh, I made a big announcement like in April and stuff. And damn. <clears throat> well, it's because of my health. I didn't know, yeah. you know, they were talking to me about like, you know, man, you ain't got much time left on this, hmm. on God's green earth here, you know? So yeah. I kind of was like, you know, maybe I was kind of at the time was like, you know, shit, 400 episodes or whatever deep we were in at the time. I don't can't remember how long ago it was or how many episodes. But um, and then, you know, I, I got back in back in shape and everything's cool. I said, fuck it, man. Let's just keep this. Let it roll. You know, yeah, man. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you have to make a lot of lifestyle changes after that? Um, you can keep, you can keep dick swinging or <laughs> oh, that's all awesome. that's working good right there. The blood flow is working good. Um, I just watch what I eat now. I watch what I exercise. Okay. Um, of course I'm gonna be on high blood pressure meds the rest of my life, which I'm good with. I'm yeah. not, I don't give a fuck. You know, whatever. I get yeah. to do what I got to do. I got to yeah. complain about it, whatever. Besides that, I'm, besides that, you know, I'm good. You know. Yeah. Cool, man. So, yeah, hell yeah. So, anyways, man, we got another video. Forget me. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna talk about me, <laughs> even though it's kind of that's what I love about this man because it's a thing where you know I kind of and as you probably heard I always mention it that when I put this thing together I don't do interviews as you can as you can tell I ask some questions here and there but it's more about like four dudes sitting around a bar you know a bar table just shooting the shit sure. and just talking yeah, shit man. that's all it is yeah you know we were just talking before we came in like we were kind of nervous but as soon as we got in here with you man like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. nervous yeah i mean no you, you're you're a cool dude man <laughs> people people get weirded out by the camera the camera's you know the thing yeah. that people get weirded out by well, i didn't notice it until just now the, the little dot the little white dot that's don't, the camera don't stare at the little white dot don't stare at the little white dot mm, hypnotize you <laughs> Next thing you know, you be hogtied in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Anyways, uh, so we have a song called "Stuck." We had a stuck the video for "Stuck." Yep, it's a, it's another another lyric video. Nice. Yeah. Uh, this one is uh, a little more bluesy uh, up until the end, but uh, yeah, this one is about exactly what it sounds like. It's about being stuck. I was uh, working at a restaurant. Had been there for years, and it was uh, my God. Anybody who works in the service industry, that that, that song is for you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not fun. You're stuck stuck in the service industry. Uh, yeah, was was at the time. Not not anymore. Got it. Got out of there. That but, was the uh, original name of the song. Stuck in the service. Yeah. Industry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it's you know anybody who feels stuck in whatever situation that they're in can't get out and all that stuff. It's it's for 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 those people. Cool. Well, here it is. The video for Stuck People. Enjoy.
There it is. There it was. Stuck. Yep. There it is. There it was. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're proud of that one. That's a good one. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good one right there. I don't care who you are. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite one to play live. Like both of these songs, they're pretty aggressive, like on their recording, but live, they're just straight up yeah, hard rock, like, like delve into metal territory. We just, we rock them up like double <laughs> live. <laughs> yeah. That, rock them up double. That one, yeah. especially, I mean, the, the whole first you know half of that is very bluesy, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, live the end of it. Um, yeah, it's it's muddled up pretty good. We're oh yeah, jumping all over the place and dancing and smacking into each other by accident, <laughs> <laughs> falling down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> got to watch out. Some of these clubs got some little stages. Man, oh man, uh, yeah. yeah, we were talking about kick butt earlier. Yeah, they oh, got yeah. a little. They actually got two stages over there. Yeah, kick butt. Yeah, oh, the one by the door, kind of. The one by the door, because oh, yeah. people put all they yeah, put all their gear on. That's where the yeah. stuff goes. <laughs> yeah, well, I remember when Dave did Dave Fest, like you know, towards the end of Dave TV and all that stuff, he would have both stages going. Yeah. So on one stage was you know playing, band was playing on one stage. They were setting, setting up, up another stage, so they would just go back and forth Damn. seamlessly. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Which That's was really great. Yeah. The we, um maybe the smallest stage we were ever on, or maybe it was just because. We had way too much gear. Uh, it was Sidewinder at the time, oh. but it was Red Seven, and then it was, it was uh, Red Eyed Fly. Red Eyed Fly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, that stage was small. <laughs> the indoor <laughs> stage, the outdoor indoor stage, stage was fine. Yeah, it was like not much bigger than your table here. It was, <laughs> it was just tiny. It was so small. Got to set the drums up on the floor. Uh, yes, I think we set the drums up on the stage, and we were on we the we floor. stood on the yeah. floor. Yeah, that's how they yeah. usually yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, that one was pretty small. I played in a waiting area in a bar in Atlanta one time <laughs> <laughs> with with a full band. It was four four dudes, drums, two guitars, and bass. That's and, awesome. Uh, man, well, I, I do not remember. What, it started with an M, whatever that place was, but uh, just you're playing just with <laughs> your hand up here. There's nowhere to go. Ugh. I'll tell you, that's one thing that's kind of weird with some clubs is you know, they present themselves as a live music club, but then the bands come in, they have no stage for them. <laughs> this, you're playing on like, you know, like a lighted dance floor or something, you yeah. know what I mean? Or some kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah, you're just in the corner. If you're going to have a live <laughs> a live music venue, man, you got to build that stage and have something a little bit bigger, you know, yeah, for the yeah. bands to play on. Yeah. And even with kick butt, like, it's smaller, but it's still like, it's kind of deep. Fucking awesome. Like, well, <laughs> but, but that place originally was just a coffee shop, though, wasn't it? Yeah. So they just started having bands? They oh. they had stand-up comedy. Initially. They still do, don't they? I think they, yeah. On like certain nights of the week? They still do. Yeah. But I think that's all they did like, right, when right. they first started. And that was that's on a that good, smaller stage. That's a good side size stage for that. Yeah, big yeah. time. That's yeah. great for, for stand-up, for sure. Oh, yeah. big time, yeah. But then, you know, they started having bands. And, and I remember I emceed a show... I th- I think it was the first Steven Bishop, I think, actually. And I was like right next to the singer, like, and he was like, he was pushed up against the drums, the drum kit. <laughs> I was up against him. And he, I think it was Johnny Mac, I think. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> no, not Johnny Mac. Uh, AJ Mac, what are you talking? Sorry about that. Huh. Um, yeah, so I was like, going, Fuck, there's no room up here, man. It's just <laughs> tiny. So I don't know how the band's playing. It must be pretty tough. It's it's pretty crowded. Like, as soon as we're done, I, just, I don't use the steps, I just jump right off. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I, I really like that club. I like that club a lot. It's yeah. awesome. People are super nice. The food is amazing. Oh, yeah, man. Those muffins. <laughs> dude, I, I ruined dude those chocolate chip muffin. cookies. Those are the ones with the M&M's in them and oh, shit. Yeah, I'm all about yeah, those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the staff and the, there. And they got booze, too. Oh, yeah. That's a <clears> Mixed good. drinks. They, uh, <laughs> they have a, uh, I forget what it's called. It's, it's, a, it's basically just an espresso Manhattan that they'll make because uh-huh. they've got awesome espresso there. And uh, I made the mistake of drinking one before we went on a couple times ago. So I don't know. It was the weirdest ever I felt <laughs> on stage. You know, wired out. Hyper and feeling like a little tipsy too. Uh, it's, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good feeling. No. <laughs> I think that's like a lightweight version of a speedball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love coffee, but man, I'm like, I'm more like a Red Bull drinker. I'm a Red Bull guy. Yeah. <clears throat> I need to get a sponsorship from those dudes. Yeah. Yeah, they'll sponsor athletes all day, but they won't touch a podcast. Yeah, what you know the what fuck, mean? man? What's yeah. up with that shit? That is weird. These uh, athletes get enough shit. What about this podcast? I we feel need like some they stuff. do okay on, on some podcasts. Oh, yeah. No, you'll, you'll see. A, but you, if you notice, like, the bigger podcasts, they all have the same sponsors. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, Manscaped and, yeah. you know. 
Yeah. Trim your balls with Manscaped, you know. <laughs> the, what was that one? The man grill? The man great. The man great. Yeah. The man great. Yeah. It was apparently it's, just like a shitty great you put on your, like grill, on your grill for but no they reason. sponsored norm mcdonald's podcast <laughs> and dude he just would like trash it the whole time Yo, i think i think meat undies is another big one me yeah, undies yeah, that yeah, one yeah it was really funny back in the old old super old rogan days they had was it fleshlight oh god <laughs> fleshlight yeah rogan that, would do that i forgot about fleshlight I that for, place is based in austin i know it's, it by, it's right next to a chick-fil-a right off yeah the i mean <laughs> i've heard i've heard tony's like i know <laughs> I know. I got a funny story. I'm not going to tell you who the guy is, but anyways, his wife works there, right? Um, I don't know if he does it anymore, but anyways, he worked there too. You know what he did? He would test the fleshlights and write <laughs> reviews on them. <laughs> so when a new fleshlight came out, he would re- he would use it, wow, and he would review it. I want to know if they're still hiring. For that job. <laughs> <laughs> Do they still have that job? There? I don't know. <laughs> I'd kill for I don't know if he, sponsorship. But his wife worked in the office or something like that, but that was his job. I don't know. How he, I'm sure it's a part time gig. He couldn't do that full time. I mean, shit. I mean, could we get 40 some? hours a week? God, yeah, that's a lot of quality control. <laughs> Can you imagine putting that on your resume like later on in life? It's like, what the fuck? How was that job? Tiring. That's, a, that's a 100% true story, too. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. He's actually a singer in a band. Yes, okay. sir. Oh, you got to tell us who it is. I'll tell you after we get off the air. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he'd mind. I'm, I think that I think I wouldn't chance it. Man. No, I wouldn't chance it. <laughs> People get upset when I mention the name on here sometimes. <laughs> That's why I said I do no editing. I don't edit on here. So I got gotcha. you. Cool. Because it takes away the magic. Yeah, yeah. you know yeah. for sure. Fun yeah. of it. Uh, you were talking about Red Bull sponsoring. D- do you remember? This had to have been like. 13, 14 years ago, down at Auditorium Shores, they did this thing called the Red Bull Flug Tug. Or, like, basically, the thing was they, they put a giant ramp at the edge of Town Lake. Oh. And they were like, they're like, build a flying device, but it can't have any <laughs> mechanical aspect to it. And whoever glides the furthest wins. Right, right. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> like, they like, still do the fluke talk. They just don't do it here. Anymore. Yeah, and it, it was that a, sounds that sounds familiar, <laughs> but I didn't go. It was my like my second or third year in Austin, and it was free. And like Perry Farrell sang the national anthem. He did like a doo wop version. What? And then Paul Wall like performed, and all that <laughs> shit was free. And you there wasn't like a huge line. Like we were talking earlier crazy. about how like concentrated and hard it is to do anything in Austin mm. though. Like shit like that doesn't happen anymore. We used but, to see, especially for South by, and South by is coming back a little bit, but we used to see awesome, huge acts for the auditorium shores. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Saw so Flaming Lips and The Strokes, and I saw Damn. Childish Gambino there, and there's just all these That's free shows. Wild. Public Enemy played there yeah, one time. Yeah, a lot of just yeah, super Mastodon. cool. Remember the, yeah, the Cult played there. Mastodon. Um, I about that. I don't, know who, I don't know who's got it this year. I didn't really know a whole lot of people. I didn't know any of playing it. And yeah. I think there's a Scott Day. That'd be kind what? of cool. I'm, yeah. yeah, I think. <laughs> I haven't random. seen anything for South by yet this year. I you yeah. know like I know no it's hype. next month and all. You know <laughs> what I mean? But I haven't. Yeah. I, have they released a schedule at all? Well, uh, South by is so decentralized. We um, I've been coming to Austin to go to South by for a long longer than I've lived here. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Buddy of mine has lived out here for a long time and. Uh, yeah, you just got to find people that are releasing all the just like RSVPs and random events and all that crap. But uh, we're on a thing called the Blue List, and there's already probably 300 RSVPs on there. Damn. Official mm. and unofficial stuff. And Well, because I know that they do a surprise show at, at Stubbs yeah. every yeah. year. And there's usually, a, I mean, Metallica played it one year. Yeah, and, I remember you know, that. You know, um, so it's hard to get into without a badge, though. Mm. Yeah, but, you know, a show like that, that's more for, you know, uh, industry people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they you can know, afford the that people. kind of thing. Well, no, because I mean, you know, the big wigs from the record companies and whatever, you got to know someone to get in, that kind of shit. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> so we got know. into Rachel Ray's party one time. What? I don't know how. <laughs> Rachel she, Ray's party. Yeah, no, she, she does one every year at Stubbs. And it's, like, a fucking, she did. it's a badass party, too. There's like <laughs> awesome bands white play? bands. Does she cook? Yeah. Really? Live music. She cooks? Her, her, husband, she cooks. her husband is or he was a musician. Really? And he was like, you know. Kenny you know, Loggins played it uh, not that long ago because we tried to get what? in and we couldn't get in. <laughs> Kenny Loggins. You got to be cooler than that to <laughs> get in. Well, you know Kenny Loggins, 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 Logg
Hey, you're you getting a little get older. Get out of here. We, we, we played Danger Zone and dressed up as that's the Top Gun Yank yeah, for, the Halloween. Scene for Halloween. Dude, that's, hey, that's, yeah. the, that's, the, that's the song that keeps on giving right there. That dude, <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know how much money he's making off that, that song? Because yeah. that new, the that new, new movie new, came yeah, out? The new Top oh, Gun. yeah, man. The new Top Gun. That guy rules, man. That guy's badass. Yeah, yeah he's still doing it. Good too. songwriter. I remember yeah. when he was in a band called Loggins and Messina. Yep. Remember that oh, yeah. shit way back in the oh, day? Yeah. No, I have no that idea. That was like way back. That's before he broke up broke loose with the Caddyshack hits, you know? Oh, dude, that song rules too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There was some good stuff on the Loggins of Messina. I actually think I have a vinyl of. Whatever uh, happened to Messina? He's kind of. <laughs> that poor bastard. Jim Messina. Is Jim Messina <laughs> still alive? He owns a McDonald's out in San Diego or some <laughs> shit. Who knows? I don't know what he does. He's probably not even alive. I'm making fun of a dead guy. I don't even know what he's doing. It's even better. You can't come back and say anything. <laughs> yeah, you, you I, know, I, know. I, I need to kind of check my facts before I start talking about people. <laughs> oh, Next man. week on the Cobra cast, Jim Messina fights back. <laughs> Jim Messina fights back. <laughs> hey, you bastard in, in Georgetown, Texas. I don't that, care about your belt. I heard that, I heard that shit you were talking. I heard that. <laughs> It's probably the first piece of press he's got in 25 years. <laughs> Podcast war, man. I wonder That'd if people awesome. are going to like this on TV. I don't know. We'll find out. I bet they will. I'm people, entertained. People love watching I'm podcasts. <laughs> I have no attention span anymore. Like the, no internet, the internet ruined me, and I'm pretty entertained. That's the whole thing. It's like, you know, for, you know, and she goes, well, you can do an, uh, Sheila, Sheila Steele. Mm -hmm. um, she contacted me and was asking me to show, well, we can do an hour. I said, man, we get rolling with these like two hours. I mean, you know, is two hours going to be too long? Oh, no, that's fine. You know, whatever you want to do. Yeah. So we kind of capped it at two hours, you know? Yeah. And, uh, man, because with me with this, it really gets rolling after about an hour. Sure. Because yeah, everybody gets settled in. They get Shake loose. You know, we have a couple drinks. We're not drinking tonight. But yeah. um, but usually, you know, and, it, and it, I've done ones, dude. It's been four hours. Wow. I didn't want, you know, L.A. Lloyd from Kelby J, right? Yeah, of course. And my buddy Bull and Shelly Knight, they came in. We did four plus hours. This is like, wow. this is recently. This wow. Is, yeah. You know? We played a show with her. She's we did. A, Shelly Knight. blonde lady, yeah. Yeah, the blonde lady. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we've yeah. done a couple. I don't know. They did a cover of uh, Space Truck in the old Deep Purple song. <laughs> First time I've ever heard a band cover that live. Hey. <laughs> it works. They hey, if it, it works, it works, yeah. man. Not like a little space trucking every now and then. Yeah, she's badass. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember her doing that. Did she really? Yeah, they did. did Shelly right? Knight band. I'm not. I'm not one. misremembering that, am I? I saw. Yeah, well, I saw the. I saw her play um, on Friday night. We were at the hot spot. My buddy. Oh, okay. My buddy Bull played. It was his birthday show, um, and she opened up. Cool. And awesome. I'll tell you what, man. It was a great show, but I was for reason, dude. It was like <laughs> it was like probably high 30s, low 40s, uh, and misting. <laughs> Dude, wow. I was so cold, man. It was miserable. But we, wow. you know, it was his birthday. He wanted to come out and you know support and everything. Yeah, so. you had to be there. Yeah, hmm, cool. How's so, that hot spot? It's I, great. I heard it's a it's great place. Cool. Yeah, it's really bad. Hey, where's that at? I don't know what Cedar that is. It's in Cedar Park. Park. I don't okay. Yeah, yeah Ooh, they get yeah. some pretty big names over there. Yeah, like it's supposed to be really cool. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll try and get talk to them. Yeah, <laughs> right up the at least get house. at least get an opening, you know. Sure. Opening. Oh yeah. I don't know who books that place. Hook I need to up, find Bobby. out. Hey, what are you looking at me for? I don't know anybody over there. I'm sure I will here in a little bit. But. If, if anybody's looking, we love opening. It's great. <laughs> Absolutely. You get to just show up early, set your stuff up, and go hang out for a while. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you get done. You get to watch the headliner and yeah. you know, just get hammered. Yeah. But anyways, but for the show coming up, you guys are headlining that whole damn sh the whole damn first day. We yes. are. Yes, uh, midnight March, on a Sunday, March twelfth. Yep, I'm just gonna quit my job. There you go. <laughs> I'm not gonna go in the next day. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're I, you're off the next day, right? Yeah, I so. took the next two days off for South by. So Ooh, I have a, a bunch move. of people come and stay at my house for South by. But you're renting it out or what? Uh, no, uh, sure. just, just buddies. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oh man, you can rent places out for a gajillion dollars here in South by. I know, yeah. big time. But yeah, no, we're uh, we're excited. Excited to play it. Excited to do a couple of South by shows. Are you got you have any official South by shows or so Bishops is unofficial. Right. Uh the 18th we have one. Yeah, that's Saturday. I have no idea. Like like I just submitted our ourselves. It's this this organization called Red Drum Media. I'd never heard of them, but they were they were looking for submissions. Yeah, it's it's not a technically official South by show, but right. it's a big it's, doing. it's during South by. It's That's over. Uh, it's at uh, Style Switch, the uh, uh, barbecue place. I don't know if you've ever been over there. 
I know exactly where that's at. Yeah. Okay. Great it, food. Um, yeah. You've been there. Yeah. Oh, I've never. I've, I know. I've I know. Oh, us, Dan. I know someone. Her brother owns it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That brother and you know, her brother and the sister in law own it. Yes. Uh, awesome. Great. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. Uh, Little that's, shout out, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> shout out to the owner's brother. <laughs> the owner's the brother, <laughs> brother and, and, her, and his wife that own it. Yes. Yeah, yes. we're there the 18th, Saturday after the the bishop. Thing. I have no idea what time we uh, we're on at the eight. We're right? on at 4 p.m. Oh, yes, yeah, so that's oh, yeah. another all day thing. Yeah. yeah, okay, but we're not headlining. Not headlining that one. Thank, okay. Thankfully. Thankfully. <laughs> Midnight. It's a tough slot, boy. That's a tough slot, man. Yeah, on a it's not the latest we've ever played. But fortunately, it's during South by, so hopefully some people will be out and out and about heading to stuff. That's so, true. So when is he going to release the Monday schedule? Because I'm really interested in the Monday schedule. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, I have no idea. I think it's released. No, it's. I looked it's at not, it today. Yeah, uh, you tagged me on four posts. <laughs> <laughs> so I went and looked at it. No, not four. I was going to say two. <laughs> no, but, when he, but he's promote. He's really trying hard to promote this thing. So he's you know tagging and hash, hashtagging and everything else. That guy works his ass off. He does, man. Yeah. Does he have a day job or what does he do? I, I think he, he does. He does have a day job. I don't Damn. know what he I'll tell you what, man. This, it's rough for me to even promote this thing. Oh yeah, Not, even on the level he's doing it. Oh yeah, it's craziness. I just, I don't have the stamina for that, man. I, I'll tell you, it's too much. I get that. I'm pr- doing all of the social media promotion stuff. It's, it's a lot, it's man. Kind of draining. It <laughs> is. Yeah, I'll do it for like a couple of weeks, and then I'm like, all right, I need like five days away <laughs> from all of this stuff. So, are you guys doing like the TikTok thing? And uh, what are you guys on? We're not on TikTok. We're on pretty much everything else. We should do TikTok. We should do TikTok. TikTok. I'm, I'm on TikTok. I have two videos on. I'm not really putting a lot. I'm not putting a whole lot into it because, from what I understand, they're trying to shut it down. Yeah, I, what? It might actually get shut down this time too. Damn. Yeah, because it's, it, it's a Chinese company that owns it and it runs it. And they're using the inf- using people's information. I don't know if they're selling the information or what they're doing with it, but anyways, they're trying to shut it down. So it's like, why am I gonna like go on there and you know really put a lot of time in this thing when it's, it's gonna get shut down in the end? You yeah, know? Super is, is that what that it. balloon thing was? Does that have anything to do with that? <laughs> that was a TikTok My, balloon. balloon. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even think about that TikTok balloon. That's hey. <laughs> I don't. I don't. A whole bunch of her flying over here. Saga. That's like a hell of a marketing strategy. I don't watch. That. I don't know anything TikTok news balloon. wise. <laughs> if like something, okay, like something blows up, I'll, I'll pay attention. But so you guys like, are doing. You guys are doing, like, of course, you know, Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, and yeah Facebook yeah. and Insta and oh, uh, uh, YouTube. <laughs> we need uh, to put more focus on our YouTube. We just will upload. Some it's videos. so much. I mean, it's, it's so, so much, much to deal with. Trust yes, me, I, yes. I'm right there with you, man. Yeah, it's exhausting. If I had the money, I would hire someone just to do full time social yes. media. Say, I, would, I would love to pawn it off yes. on somebody yeah. else. <laughs> no, because I mean, there's people that, that that's their job and they know how to do it right. Sure. Yeah. And they're I, real good at it. Yeah. And I do my stuff and it, it gets out there, you know, mm-hmm. but it, I'm sure it could be a hell of a lot better, you well, know? It's almost like you have to take on a different persona. You got to be like cheery and happy yeah. and to try and convey like, Energy and man, I just <laughs> like, well, man. look at me. You know, I can imagine me. Every day. Would yeah. you want to? Would you want to see this face every day? Hey, you know. Uh, you hey, know. come on, guys. Hey, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag, hashtag, <laughs> hashtag. Hey, come on, guys. God. Part of part of what kills me about doing it is the, the general fakeness of it. Oh, so, no kidding! It, it man. gets so old. Yeah, I hate to do it. It feels dirty. It does, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'll tell you, social media is, people say like the, you know, the root of all evil is money. No, it's social media. It really is. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. We actually, we, we have a song that's sort of indirectly about all that. Uh, it's called Cynicism now. I was about to call it oh, yeah, Narc. Yeah. It was called Narc for a little while, but uh, uh, we haven't recorded that one. But I, that's probably one of our heaviest songs. It's a little bit more tooly. Nice well. meaty breakdown in the middle of it. Oh, yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of about that. Nice. Being fake and, and doing all that crap. A lot of it is, man. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and, and destroy the social media industry when we get that one recorded. <laughs> just you, just imagine how it is now. Imagine what it's going to look like in 10 years. Uh, oh, oh, Jesus, yeah. man. I can't imagine that. I always tell people, if, if I didn't do this, I would be off social media completely. Yeah. Sure. It wrecks people's fucking lives. It just yeah. does, man. It's yeah. a nightmare. I yeah, essentially just use it for band stuff. <laughs> yeah, honestly. exactly. If it wasn't yeah. for the podcast, I mean, I very rarely put stuff on. I put something on here today. Hey, yeah, got a lot done over the weekend. Got you guys coming up. We're going to record the episode. Yada, da, 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 you know, and that kind of stuff. But besides that, yeah, I can't see 
you know, being yeah. on there every day, every every piece of your life being on there. I oh, just God. I need some yeah. private time, yeah. you know. <laughs> sure. I see people like posting pictures and videos of like their dead relatives at funerals. I'm like, oh, what yeah. the fuck? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like to having a selfie with like a dead body. No, the best ones are when they when they the people like they'll take the bodies and like they'll I, I saw one, he was a drummer. And they put him on a, they, oh, put him behind, a kit? they put him on a drum behind a drum set, and they kind of like got him just like, and he's got oh. sunglasses on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they got him like set up in like no, but they no, got him. Where? I swear to God, look it up. Taxidermy grandpa. They, it's like taxidermy, but they put him behind like. Oh god! So the one dude, you walk in a funeral home, and there's a this guy's like this dead guy is sitting behind a drum set. Uh. I was like not a coffin, oh. a drum set. There was one. There was one I saw that they had like a one of their gang members or something had died, and they got him out of the coffin and they smuggled him into a club and they put him on stage with all oh, yeah, this yeah. like yeah that was a rapper guy right. Oh, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy that. shit, dude. That's some, that's that's, some nutty shit. It's not like even... eight felonies right there. <laughs> yeah, but that that's today. That's yeah, the way it's people ridiculous. rolled it. You can actually do that, man. Yeah. So if you want to. Sit behind your drum kit or whatever. <laughs> he had sunglasses on, so he couldn't see his eyes or not. You know, but. man, I always thought. Lack of. I thought getting okay. buried in a kid's coffin would be tacky. I can't imagine like <laughs> putting me up with a bass guitar. <laughs> He's fucking standing. There. <laughs> That's terrifying. The whole, the whole, the whole band dies in a plane crash, and we just get set on stage <laughs> for the <laughs> We're playing. You're strapped to a pole. <laughs> God damn. Anyways, we got to end this one, dude. We're almost at two hours, so. Dang, Damn. Just quick. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys so much for coming up. This has been a blast. We'll have to do it again soon. <laughs> thank Thanks you so much for having, having us. Yeah, no thanks, problem, man. man. Yeah. And uh, good luck at the show over at the uh, at Mr. Bishop's uh, soiree over there. Oh, at, yeah. uh, yep. Over at Kick Butt. Sunday night. Over at Love Kick you, Butt. Steven. We'll let you know when he posts Monday. <laughs> yeah, we we'll got to find out about Monday. On that Monday show. <laughs> Anyways, we got a, uh, a quick, we're going to head out. Uh, End the podcast same way every single time, people. Here it is. People, please try to do the right thing, because Lord knows most of you don't. With that, we are out of here. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other, and we'll see you soon. One word from Iron Wolf Ranch and Distillery.